when it comes to you. Ooh, I never seen nothing like it in my life. I mean, y'all, I mean, when it comes to you, when it comes to your turn, I mean, I ain't never seen nothing like it. I mean, ooh, my feet hurt so bad. You ever said that? <laughs> and the minute you take your shoes off, your feet stop hurting. So it's obvious it's the shoes. <laughs> ain't got nothing to do with the feet, so I'm going to go over here and pay this foot doctor some money. <laughs> ooh, girl, do your feet don't hurt when you're in bed? Because you take your shoes off. So it's the shoe. Now, you don't even have to be smart to figure that out. Well, when I put these shoes on, my feet killing me. When I take them off, and y'all see y'all, I see y'all sometimes now. Men just got too much vanity. They ain't going to take theirs off. They be just walking. They trying to be cool. <laughs> and you sisters, you sisters, I, I can't believe you sisters live with the brothers as long as y'all have and don't know something. Brother, be walking down the street, sister said, why don't you tell them, brother, be walking down the street holding that joint? He wish it was down there. <laughs> <laughs> and you know something? If you beauticians and barbers, if y'all really observe what was happening, so y'all really been blessed if you use that for something else other than just listening to their gossip. You can look at my hair and know every move I'm going to make. And y'all need to go get a book called The Cool Pose. And if y'all going to be here tomorrow, I'll have it on the board, called The Cool Pose by Richard, Dr. Richard Miller, Major. The Cool Pose by Dr. Richard Major, Professor University of Wisconsin. Let me tell you why I'm, I'm wasting your time with this here. Let me tell you what he found out. You see, because one day when we solve our problem as black folks, we will teach white women to solve their problem as white women. We will teach gays to solve their problem as gays. Because it ain't no accident that all these movements started 20 years ago after we started 30 years ago. Ain't no accident. No gay rights movement. No women's rights movement. And let me tell you something, baby. Them, 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 them white ladies need to get a movement going. Woo! Hey, wait. You think it's funny? A white woman in today, 1993 in America with a doctor's degree, makes 56 percent less than a white boy that dropped out of high school. One day gonna find out who the nigga is. <laughs> Hear me good now. Listen to me. Good. White woman. Listen to me good now. Ain't got time to play. Listen to me good. White woman got on the boat with him. 1620. All right? Came over here with him. Spit him out of her belly. Take him back in the back, baby, because they're taping now. Hear me? Spit him out of her belly. It's her husband. It's her son. He didn't give her the right to vote to 1920. Blame this on me. All right? My own son blocked me, and y'all running around here taking this thing lightly? A white woman in America didn't get the right to vote to 1920? And y'all are old enough a few years ago when ERA got voted down, you know that's white women. ERA got voted down, you want to hear something shocking? Not one black state legislator voted against it. Okay? Basically white men. And I said then, if this white boy ain't willing to liberate his mama, I know my mama better stay in the house. Come on now, this is just how serious this thing is now. Y'all sitting around here playing games and don't know why your children doing what they're doing because they know you punks. See, there's a subconscious mind back here. All right? And the French done done some, 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 some research and found out what's your name, sister? Mm. This is my wife. This is my son. This is my daughter. I go to Africa today. Leave you here because I got to take care of the men. I have a affair with African woman. You don't know nothing about it. She goes to China next week, having an affair. I don't know nothing about it. You know what they're finding out with this research? That when we walk in the house, 
the children know. They don't know mom and dad had sex. A bell goes off and said the family unit is being threatened. And they also find out that the more children that bell go off into, there's the ones that have the most criminal mentality, the most violent, and the most insane. Okay, so y'all can play your game if you want to. But there's a universe that has order. Okay? Y'all talk all that old God, Jesus stuff. You want God don't need you to defend God. Y'all got to be something. Do you think Rockefeller would need you to sit here and defend Rockefeller? Rockefeller, you you got you got to be stupid to sit here and defend Rockefeller's money. Rockefeller don't need you. Well, if that chump don't need, what makes y'all think God needs? Because y'all scared and you really don't believe. Y'all ain't never the game you're playing, and you don't even know it. You gonna tell me you were born over again, Christian, but if you was a hoe, you don't have to tell me you're a hoe. I can tell that just by your attitude. I can see an elephant and know it's an elephant, see a gorilla and know it's a gorilla. What is it about being a born over Christian I can't look at you and tell? Huh? Cops can see dope pushers walking down the street. They don't wait till they say they dope pushers. If we was cops, we know what a hoe look like. How come I can't recognize y'all as a born over again Christian? What are y'all doing wrong? <laughs> what is this game about? And one day, all the games is going to cease. One day. We will solve our problem not through no emotionalism. When we put in the scientist's head. Give me three beauticians in here. Raise your hand. <coughs> Baby, I swear to God, I don't know nothing about doing nobody's hair. If I had to do this sister's hair here, you know I'd mess it up. You know I'd mess it up. I don't care how much I love her, how much I'd like to do it, I can't do it. You understand what I'm saying? It's the same thing about solving our problems. We're going to bring the sun. When, when these white folks decided they want a nuclear bomb, they didn't go get some white folks that hated communism. They went and got some smooth scientists, right? And they sit them in the lab, and they came up with a nuclear bomb. Now, if they can have that respect for something as nasty as a bomb, what day are we going to have this much respect to turn our problem around? That's what the game is about. That's what the whole game is about. Them tight shoes, you well, they wasn't tight when you bought them. Ain't nobody stupid enough to buy tight shoes. <laughs> you know they wasn't tight when you bought them. Matter of fact, have you ever bought a pair of shoes when you put your foot in them, they was loose? <laughs> and it looked like when you get dressed and you're three hours away from the house, you say, not nah, get them. <laughs> Why? Because you're not supposed to buy shoes before 5 or 5.30 in the evening. Because the sun rises in the morning. That's why you're supposed to do exercise in the morning, not in the evening. And if you don't believe it, plant a garden and water your garden just in the evening to see what happens to it. There's a rhythm. There's a rhythm. The whole everything has a rhythm. And those of you all that do barbing and do the whole thing, y'all got a rhythm. And the best ones have the best rhythm. And the universe has a rhythm. And as the sun rises in the morning, that's why you get your high blood pressure, cerebral hemorrhage, heart attack, death between 11 and 20, and 10 minutes to 12 in the morning because the sun hits its highs and it starts going down. That's why you're better off. You got high blood pressure. Don't eat nothing in the morning. Wait till that sun goes down. And as the sun goes down, your blood pressure goes down. But as the sun goes down and starts moving down this way, it starts going towards your feet. That's why your feet is, is larger. Right before sunset. That's when you buy your shoes. If you don't buy your shoes, then your feet will hurt. And they don't need being so dumb, I go, I don't know why my feet are, you know why your feet are, them shoes. Take them off. Feet stop hurting. And a fourth of all the bones in your body is in your feet. Who should know that any better than beauticians and barbers? That's your gig, baby. Who should know that any better? A fourth of all the bones in your feet, in your body, is in your feet. Now you want to hear something else? Because of gravity pull, 85% of all the poison in your body is pulled into your feet. Which means no barber, beautician, postman, nobody wear, should ever wear the same shoe within 24 hours. Because the poison is in it. They have to dry out. Nobody should wear the same shoe within 24 hours. Especially if you're a barber, beautician, and working on your feet. You should change your two, two or three times a day and stock in suit. And then go take you some foot baths. Take you some foot baths. And then, because that's your gig, baby. And once we start understanding the body, wow. What's your name, brother? Robert. 
What's your name, sister? Both of them got sugar diabetes. Y'all know men and women with sugar diabetes, right? There's more women on the planet than men. Y'all know that, right? Y'all know that, right? So you know there's more women with sugar diabetes than men. Not because they get it more, but there's more women than men, right? Who, who do you know has their toes cut off the most with sugar diabetes? They live. Women or men? Men. Then it must have nothing to do with sugar diabetes. Sugar diabetes also pulls the acid into your shoes, and it's the acid that creates the problem. Yeah, but people say, well, you know, Papa had to get his toe cut off because he cut his toe and it didn't what? Because sugar diabetes. Didn't heal, right? Now, do, he, do, do men shave their face or their feet? So if I got sugar diabetes and shave my face, it's obvious I cut my face, right? Then if my damn face heal, what makes you think my, my toe would heal? All right, think about it. Listen, let me know. Did you hear what I said? I cut my face shaving every day, and it heals. So what is it about sugar diabetes? There's an acid that comes off with sugar diabetes that's pulled into my feet, and the reason you women don't get it is stand up, sister, for me. Just put your, put, 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 no, just stand up real quick. Put your foot up there. Put, put your foot up there. Put your foot right there with your shoe on. How many men you going to see today with that on? So if she got sugar diabetes, he got sugar diabetes, the wind's blowing on her. See what I'm saying? How many men you going to find with open toe shoes, and how many women change shoes for no other reason just to match their outfits so women change their shoes more than men? Thank you, dear. Now, that little thing alone makes the difference in you losing your foot, your toe, or your limb. That's kind of stupid, ain't it? Isn't that kind of stupid? But all it is is just reasonable. Wait a minute now. But that whole thing, we even doctors have been to that dumbness. Wait, what, what, what does a doctor know? The symbol of medicine is a crooked stick with a snake wrapped around it. <laughs> Hospital, you know, that's a Latin word. Y'all know that? You know what I mean? A place to die. Yeah, so when you go to hospital, you go to a place to die. And 85% of everybody died in America last year died in hospitals, which means they're about 15% off. <laughs> so if I went to a hospital and they didn't kill me, I'd sue them for malpractice. <laughs> I come here to die. My old lady just left me. I don't want to live. And I'm chicken to commit suicide, so I come to the hospital. How come y'all didn't kill me? No, you're going to pay me. Snap on the chair for me. Make like she has some pants on with pockets in it. I'll go in her pocket. Pull out a beeper. What's the first thing you think? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bring a white towel up here and go in and pull out a beeper. Doobie Hauser. <laughs> See how it works? <laughs> See how it works? Is that cold? Yeah, but that's where they land. That's the vibration they give me. All right? That's the game. And we buy into it. Hear me good now. That whole image. Image. And somewhere that whole thing is going to have to change because it, it messes up my health. I got to drink water. All oh, y'all should fast one day a week. You might as well get ready because it's coming, baby. I mean, it's some strange stuff. Y'all don't believe it. Don't take my word. How I many y'all got the Notre Dame's book at home? Y'all got Notre Dame? Go back and read it. You see what it says? Way back then, 16-something. And when you look at it, he talks about, he talks about Denver and talk about popish people will come to Denver to be with the youth and you in the last five years. Now, he wrote that way back in 15-something. And look, but look like y'all can feel something. Y'all say, I ain't never seen no children like this in my life. You ain't never been around no children that have what these children have. And y'all the only people in the world blame the children. I ain't talking about black folks, I'm talking about Americans. If my mother and father had blonde hair and blue eyes and I showed up here today looking like this, y'all should ask me some serious questions, right? Because I'm a reflection of who? So everything them children are doing, black and white in America, they're a reflection of you. And when you look at them, you see a mirror of yourself. So what you upset about? What you upset about? Somebody called me up talking about the rap music the other day. I said, I tell you what, bitch this and, 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 and sex this. I said, I tell you what, 
fine, honorable black men like me and ask us all if we're honest, have we ever called a sister a bitch? We have. Have we ever talked about sex? These youngsters are just honest enough to put some music to it and say what we've always been saying. And those of us that don't say it, don't get upset when we're sitting with the men and hear them say it. Because the men always running around talking about how much they can got and how much we can control you with our sex art. Do you know men think that? And got y'all believing that. Yeah, I know, I know, you know, y'all, I'm in the room with everybody. I can always find the one room, like I ask people, how many of y'all in the room had claps? I'm the only one with my hand, I can't find it. <laughs> Nobody that ever had claps but me. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel so good about it, because that means white folks invented penicillin for a little knackerhead nigga born on welfare in 1932. Woo, I feel good. AIDS was invented in Fort Detrick, Maryland. Two places on the whole planet that had it. New York City, y'all remember that? And what was the other city? San Francisco. There's all white folks, right? Now they got y'all believing it's a nigga thing. All white folks. Y'all remember that? Yeah. They told you it was a gay thing, right? In the first four years of age, not one black had it, and not one jail member had it. And we know what they're doing in jail. How y'all go for that trick? Nah. How can y'all say it's a homosexual? It ain't even running rampant in jails and penitentiaries now. <laughs> What's this game about? And that's what I'm saying. God gave you an intelligence. When y'all stop using it trying to defend God, God don't need you to defend God. Some walk up and say, hey man, I don't believe in God. Okay, what's next? <laughs> so what's next? <laughs> if I walk up and told you, if y'all don't believe in God, you act a fool. And I'm just using you. You act a fool. Act a fool. And I know most of y'all would. I ain't going to ask you because I know y'all going to act a fool. But if I told you I didn't believe in the sun, you'd feel sorry for me. Why? Because I can see the sun and you can see the sun, but what you can't see, even you don't believe in. You dare me to say that it don't exist. That's what that game is about. Can you imagine if this sister got $10 billion, I'll come in and tell her she's broke, or she clown like a fool, she ain't got no money. Since when who, me who don't know nothing about her can determine what she got, and she's stupid enough to believe in. All right? So that's what the whole game is about. That, I mean, when we just sit and we just listen to what they're telling us. White, racist, Christian society? Tell me about it. Tell me about it. Mardi Gras is held every year where? New Orleans. Christians go to New Orleans to celebrate Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras is known as Sin City. They don't go to change it, but to be part of it. And do you know it's the only Christian festivities in the Western world that whores come in from all over the world to help them celebrate? Come on, Christians. And you want to hear something? Any of y'all here from New Orleans? Are you aware that the only time a New Orleans cop can't take time off is doing Mardi Gras? That's right. When the Christians is coming. <laughs> <laughs> not the gangsters, not the Masons, who can be a trifling little group. <laughs> I don't believe you said that. Greg, you're a black dog. You ought to be a, a Mason, a 33 degree Mason. That's one degree above freezing. Check that one out. <laughs> Where you going? You hear me? Not my song, you hear me? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> maybe I am. Maybe I am. Where are you? Where are you going, white woman? I'm like, I didn't release you. <laughs> you know, we're here some fun. We're here some fun. How many of y'all have seen me in college? Anybody ever seen me in college? Yeah. My audience is mostly 98% white folks. Very seldom ever talk to. This man, I mean, you know, I thought fifteen thousand dollars to speak. So they think black folk can hire me, and so, so I come here because of this brother here. But I'd be easy 
when I be sitting here. But I, if y'all ever see me with white folks, because they can take it. Oh, no, no, no. They know. I mean, see, the one great thing that white folks ain't never said about Malcolm, they never got on TV and said Malcolm lied on us. Think about that now, because that's important. They say all kinds of things about Malcolm, but they never said Malcolm lied on us. I was being interviewed by, who's the guy that took Cronkite's place? Rather than rather says, uh, uh, Dick Gregory, uh, you know, I, I, I never understood Malcolm until I talked to you. And, 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 but, 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 uh, and I see another side of Malcolm. Did y'all see that show? And he said to me, he said, he said to me, go back and listen to it because he said something in that show about the tapes that the CIA didn't release to them probably tell who killed Malcolm. Okay? So he said to me, he said, you know, uh, 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 listening to you, I see a different side of Malcolm, but how do you, how do you justify this beautiful man referred to white folks as devils? I said, because Malcolm was a Christian, and most Christians see his problems with devils. I mean, he was a Christian, but he's a Muslim. But as long as that black brother gets on TV and say the devil made me do it, as long as he clowned it with women's dresses on, 65,000 folks turn in and listen to it. But when Malcolm said, without no dress on and clowning, y'all won't get upset. We all turned on TV. Watch the brother. What was his name? The devil made me do it. It's funny. See, white folks, it's funny. As long as you clowning, as long as you talking about death jam, but if y'all had a beauty school and we pulled our money and wanted to teach little ghetto sisters how to do hair and ghetto brothers how to, how to do hair, they had a network that would give us an hour's time a week to do that. But death jam will give it to us as long as I'm doing something derogatory and bring the whole group down. That's what we got to understand. Okay? That's the game. That is the game. And so when you sit and you look at what they, what they give us, what they dish us, Mardi Gras, what they call Fat Tuesday, that's what they crackers eat anything moving on Fat Tuesday. Then on Ash Wednesday, they hit the head with the ash, then go somewhere and fake up the hair for 40 days. And that's why I do not go to church on Easter. I do not want to be around y'all on Easter. Because y'all be sitting there, where is it? When they crucify my Lord. <laughs> Let me tell you something, baby. That's a cheap song to sing 2,000 years later. You wasn't there then, and most of y'all wouldn't be there now. And you know how I can prove that? You know how I can prove that? Because we one of the few countries in the world that have capital punishment. One of the few countries that have capital punishment. One of the few countries in the world that have capital punishment. Which means if Jesus Christ came back to America today, 2000, how can you love Christ and don't get rid of capital punishment? Don't you know Christ died because the state killed him? He didn't get mugged to death or run over by a drunken chariot driver. <laughs> Christ was killed by the state. Which means if Jesus Christ come back to America today and bugged the wrong people, the country would give him the electric chair. Then we'd all be walking around with big chairs around our necks. <laughs> Good game. There were some white scientists they didn't believe in God. You didn't nobody bother them. So you don't believe in God, so that you you're not believing God gonna affect me. What's that game about? I get more affected by you sitting there with T B. Then you don't believe in God. You can cough on me and I can get it. And let me tell you something, y'all worried about AIDS? There's a strand of TB that's running across this country. That one cough in this room, all you got, you know where it's coming from? It's the marijuana. They spray the marijuana with it. Right? That's the game. They create an attitude and they put in it. Okay? That's the game they play. And so when we sit and we look at, 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 at the games that, that they run down, that we can sit. So these white boys say, I don't believe in no God. I, mean, I met some scientists. I don't do what I was. I meet some scientists. And I get them straight when I first meet them. Science was playing with me. I understand you're a Christian. I don't even answer. Oh, uh, tell me about your God. I didn't come here to tell about my God. But I tell you what to do. You one of the top five scientists in the world. That's why I'm here to meet you. And that's why I'm paying you eleven thousand dollars an hour, because you got some information I want. 
And I'm mad to begin with because I was doing some research on breast milk and I asked to see the world authority on breast milk. And wouldn't you know it'd be a man <laughs> at Oxford University? I said, but since you're so smart, I said, but you know, derogatory religion, I said, make me a scab, white boy, with all your knowledge, with all your money, with all your CIA and your FBI, with all your ability to make rockets can go from one planet to another. Make me a scab. You don't have to argue about God unless you're a fool. Make me a scab. I don't care how white you are, a scab is always darker than you, and I don't care how black you are, the scab is always blacker than you. And you can't buy one, you can't make nobody give you one, you can't steal one, and all that scab is, is that universal God. For see, God is so good, God say, oh, you don't have to recognize me. That ain't the issue. The issue is I made you, chump. Whether well, you know me or not, I made you. That's like if if, 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 I, if I'm her son, I walk on and say, that ain't my mama. That just bothered her. I came out of her belly. Didn't come from her, I came through her. That's where y'all find me. Y'all think they coming from y'all. Uh-uh. Coming through y'all. God just used y'all as a channel to get me here. That's what that game is about. That's all that's about. And then y'all don't even listen to God tell you how to raise me. Eat your vegetables. Your mother tell you that? Her mother told her that? How long do you have to keep telling the child to eat vegetables for God trying to tell you that vegetables I didn't mean for y'all to eat? How long? How long? Vegetables were not meant for us to eat. You don't have to make a child do nothing that they're supposed to do. Go doo-doo. Go pee-pee. <laughs> you ever had to make a child eat an orange or an apple? And right in Genesis, but y'all so playing so many games and so on, God is speaking, you don't even see it. Right in Genesis 1, 28, Behold, I've given you every earth-bearing seed for you. It is your meat. What is meat? The meat of an apple? The meat of an orange? When you eat a steak, that's flush. The white boy changed the word so he could trick y'all and y'all fall into it. So it tells you right there. If it ain't got a seed in you, but your children tell you, when you go to bed at night, go home and change your bed. Damn what the house looks like. Put your head north. That's where God meant for you to sleep. And your little baby will get in the crib with old dumb you, and they'll seek out north every night, and you'll keep straightening them up. And they'll keep seeking out north. They don't go all around that bed. They go to one little spot. And if that bed ain't north, they'll roll north. Because if you ever took a compass out, it pulls that needle due north. Every time you lay down in a horizontal position, every nerve in your body is pulled due north. So if you lay in north, you'll heal faster. You'll sleep better. That's what the whole game is about. And it ain't no accident they get schools that don't teach you that. They ain't meant to teach you that. I went to grade school, high school, and college before I realized sugar was the number three killer on the planet. I got to send them all with some chump about God. Because when I, when I see this, when I see this, Scab, that's God saying to me, my son, I'm in charge now. You've been to the doctor, you've been everywhere, you had your operation, can't nobody make a scab. I'm doing something underneath this. And all I say is don't pull it off. The dumbest person on the planet knows you're not supposed to pull off a scab. Now they don't go to the other level and say because that's God's work underneath that. And God will let you know when my work's complete because the scab will turn into a scar. And yet and still y'all shame the scars. Every time you look at your body, wherever you see a scar, that's what God said, I've completed my job there. You should be proud of that. So some people look at you and say, you don't know God. I start showing my scars. You think I don't know God. Check this out. Right there. That's why I got shot and watched. My son. That's the game. And then you got to use your consciousness. Not Harvard or Yale, that's a trick. That's a game. Columbus discovered America, the punk got lost. <laughs> when you get through laughing, that's in your book. And that's what they expose your children to. And I live around rich white folks. When you hear something about rich white folks, you don't flunk none of their children. Oh, you ever flunk one of their children, you not only lose your job, they might see you. Listen, you're a cancer specialist, okay? You look at me and you say, hmm, this is where your head looks look like you might have brain cancer. Now, she might
might be just playing. I might be lying, but the fact she's a specialist, right? You know, what do you do for a living, bro? Um, law clerk. Law clerk. So if you told me that, I wouldn't care about it, right? She's a specialist, right? So if the school teacher's a specialist and say to this little child, you dumb, that child's scarred for the rest of her life. That's why the rich black folk don't let you say their children dumb. What they have? They have fourth grade. Y'all know about it? Fourth grade honors. The dumb ones in the fourth grade. Fourth grade honors, fourth grade super honors, and all the way across. That's a different level. And according to your genius, you have a book. So everybody in that class works to their level. Right. Poor folks, they just open up the class and this brilliant one got it. And so this dumb one here got to work as fast as this one. This one going to flunk. I said somewhere in the school. You ever been to one of these schools where they say, you sit here and they say, look at the student next to you because next semester that one won't be there. Mean a third got the flunk. I said, no, I I'm getting out now. <laughs> Let me get out here now. Don't play no games with me. And before I was nonviolent, I did hit a teacher. I'm sorry, ma'am. I did hit a teacher. It was a man, if that means anything. Flunk me in English. Flunk me in English. I grabbed that nigga in this car. So why are you, you going to flunk me in the only language I know? I mean, I can understand if I spoke four or five languages. You know, some black people be fucking. All I speak is English. You said I can't talk at all. He know that I know I'd make millions of dollars one day just talking. He flunked me in the only language I know. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Like if a cat want to plug your rectum up, that's the only ball I got. Man, we got to fight. You know, because when that was plugged up, ain't no place else I can do, do. Uh-huh, he's going to let you handle that. Well, that's like telling me, you can't talk. I'm not going to take that home to my mother. <laughs> Did you ever get a report card y'all to change things for your mother? Because parents be so dumb. You know what? I got 10 children. Is, is my son in here now? Is he always in here? he be in the I ain't never... Where's my daughter? Is my daughter? So Pam. Is Pam leave out? I, I ain't never in my life asked to see one of my children's report card. You know why? As dumb as I was when I was in high school and the way I could trick my parents, with all these computers and stuff, plus with these white children, I know they can lay some report cards out, man, that the, that the school ain't never seen. <laughs> and let me tell you, y'all got to be careful now, because y'all living in a country of law. You teaching at Howard University? This is your daughter. You send her grades home to me, who's paying her way without her consent, you can go to jail. That's right. Now, y'all be talking all this old crazy stuff. Huh. I'm gonna, no, no, it don't work, baby. You're a country of law. Y'all better start understanding that. And the reason it didn't bother you before, because white folk didn't care enough about y'all to even cut you in. Let me tell you, you're at Howard University. She commits a crime. You hear me? She calls me up and tell me. She violated. Now, y'all be see, see because y'all running around playing games, y'all want folks to do something with y'all children that a strange doctor better not give your medical records away. All right? A doctor, a lawyer cannot discuss your case. Your children have the same rights. All right? You live in a country that is about law. Thank you, dear. Did you know if they found it in chalk? Nobody, no, somebody went to look. Thank you so much. Somebody went to look for some. I guess they didn't. Is there is anybody in that room that can go, huh, will you? Okay, baby, fine. If you don't, don't come back now. <laughs> you didn't say, I look. You said, I'll find you. Say, I'm, 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 you said, in front of all these people. Then, you know, <laughs> where, where, where we leave off? Law. 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 Game. The whole game. It's the game. And next time y'all see Miss Jackson, y'all ever seen it? Blind? Better look at it good, because look at it good. That, that thing is down over one eye. Have y'all, y'all know it? Yes, sir. Go look at it. One of the eyes, the rag ain't around it, because that's all it is, all right. And she got her hand on the scale, tipping it. So they don't lie. They don't lie. That's why I keep me some white power. I keep me, I keep me, oh, I got a couple of white people. Why you hire me? I said, hire you, because you got some power, bro. <laughs> That's right. Listen. Listen. Columbus got lost. Y'all know what country Columbus was looking for? Come on. Come on. Somebody know. No, 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 no. No, no. India. India. He was going to India. You know India? Hindu? India? 
that white boy, you know how far India is from here? But you still you with that redneck there? He didn't only not get there, he got way over here, but said, damn them, y'all Indians. Change the name of these people. <laughs> Laughing, you call them that too. Tell me about white folk power. The boy got lost. I'm looking for my brother in Cleveland. I end up in Atlanta and declare you him. You a woman from, from New Orleans. They ain't that power. I declare you my brother, Melvin. And I, you say something about it, I'll kill you. <laughs> Take your clothes off. Oh, I know you, Melvin. You said operation, nigga. Shut up. You understand what I'm saying? Came with that law. Came the wrong way. But was so strong, even being lost, just declared you are Indian. Damn it, I might be at the wrong place, but I'm with the right people. <laughs> and me no, me no, me no Indian. See, people's words change. It's like, like, uh, uh, the new gay thing now is, is uh, uh, ask, well, what is it, uh, don't ask, don't tell. Now, if you were Spanish, they don't use the word dope, they use no. So that means no ass, no tail. That, that would scare you, wouldn't it? That's, that's enough to make you shout to me, oh, what? What did I do wrong? Hmm? That whole game, they play. And somewhere when you look at it and see it, them white boys that, that didn't believe in God because they were scientists, they wrote a book. And I'll tell you about that other one y'all wrote down. What was the name of it? Um, Kupo. Okay. Kupo. Kupo. By Richard Major. But, but listen, don't, don't break the trend. Don't break, I'll get back to it. Listen now. Listen. Listen. Follow it. Follow it. Follow it. Those scientists wrote a book called what? That I tell you name? Chaos. Chaos. Now there's two chaos. Look for the one with the butterfly syndrome, because I can't remember that. You know why they call it chaos? These scientists were just sitting around having their meetings. And if you can't prove it to me, it don't exist. And they found out something that blew their minds. They had their science stuff together so good that they realized from their scientific study that butterflies flapping their wings in Peking decide what the weather pattern is going to be like in New York nine months later. Okay. Did you hear? Butterflies flapping their wings in Peking decide what the weather pattern is going to be like in New York nine months later. So they said, yes, it is a God. And then they wrote a book and called it Chaos, and they come from not believing in God to knowing something we don't know. On the other side of chaos, there is order. That's what the book is about. On the other side of chaos. Well, here's something about a butterfly, a little delicate butterfly. Do you realize a butterfly can fly all the way across the Atlantic Ocean? Can fly all the way across the Pacific Ocean, but a bald eagle can't make that trip. And they got you believing that if you ain't rough or mean, you're a punk, you're a sissy. So what? What is roughness? It, 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 ain't, it, it ain't order of God. What is that game about? What's that game about? How come the rich, rich, rich folks that go to the best schools in the world have no contact sport? If you wouldn't take your car and put on a field and try to get it past my car without me hitting you, why would you let your child go to school and play football where they're ramming God's brains and body up against another one? What's that game about? No, don't clap, baby. You might be doing it because your son can't play football. <laughs> I mean, think about it. How did we get over here? Because one day, after we get through this mess, and that's why I hope we heard him get through it, we're going to have to say that slavery couldn't happen to me unless it was the will of God. See, when you really get down to it, can't nothing happen to me that God don't order. See, white folk think stronger than God. So what did I do wrong? I'm over there putting bones through my nose and plates in my lips, and God said, you want to mess up my body, nigga, I'll send you over to the body mess up. <laughs> Go hang them earrings in your ears you want, put them in your nose, you're violating. Violating, if you don't believe it, go check the records. 
up until eight years ago, but it was a strange disease that nobody was dying from but women. It was a fungus on the brain. And now men is getting it because now they're getting them earrings in there and there's infection go there. And when that blood comes through the arteries, it comes through the veins. And a vein is kind of interesting because a vein will open up. Okay, arteries don't. Because you got 62,000 miles of blood vessels in your body. Tell me about God. And your blood make a complete cycle every 30 seconds. And if you could take your blood vessels out right now and lay them end to end and reach around this planet Earth twice with 12,000 miles left over, that's what you're sitting there with right now. And you somebody going to debate God? I got 62,000 miles of blood vessels in my body that don't get in my way. I ain't never tripped over a blood vessel. <laughs> I mean, how many blood vessels do you have? How many miles? And it go around this planet of what? Well, how many left over? And your blood makes a complete cycle every 30 seconds. Which means right now, if you sit there, your blood travels 125,000 miles a minute, 7,500,000 miles an hour, or 180 million miles a day. And because we don't know that, they got us believing the jet plane is saying. <laughs> now, now, now look how God put this body together. You know how I knew God was God. I swear to you, if, if God came to me the first day and said, Dick Gregory, I'm going to make a man. But now, I got these testicles. And I'm going to give them to you to hang because you think you're smart, nigga. <laughs> See, where you want to put them? I would never think about putting them there. <laughs> you know God had to be God. I can do this. I don't sit on them. I can run. I don't kick them. I never would have dreamed. You know God got to be God to hang that stuff there. I sit down every day. I drive a car, I ride a plane, I ain't never sit on the ball. Oh, God, you so magnificent. Oh, you so magnificent. Oh, God. I mean, think about that. Think about that. I would think about maybe under the armpits or, or maybe in my hand or maybe in my mouth. You know, but not there. Nigga, I'll kick your butt, nigga. You kick it, but you ain't gonna get my balls because God got, I mean, and don't hit my balls. Tell me about God. <laughs> and God also said that the sperms that I'll give you to create another one of me will be at a body temperature, two degrees below your body temperature. That's why the old folks used to call two below. Your sperms live at a body temperature two degrees below your body. If you don't believe it, if I got naked now, <laughs> that's funny, I can say that. Let me tell you what you got. I can say it and everybody laughs, but I was born naked through God. But if I say cocaine, wouldn't nobody laugh, and God didn't give us cocaine. See, we'll see how they switch this thing around? Now, I get naked, and I turn here, and y'all throw some hot water, put a shower of hot water on my back. What my testicles do? Come down. See? Listen to me now. God said that these sperms can only live at a body temperature two degrees below your body temperature. So if my body heats up, the sperm... Now if y'all put cold water on me, what my testicles do? Come up. So when that cracker over there decided he was going to sterilize everybody, he made the shorts that sit up here that don't come down when your body get hot and y'all stupid enough to get hooked in all right? But if you go to where the rich, rich, rich white men shop, all of them are the breeds that come down here. All right? Your vagina breathes like your mouth because life got to come through it. So they come out with the little pantyhose out of nylon because they know your vagina cannot breathe through nylon until a couple of us and some friends of mine decide to take that case up. Not until then do they put that thin strip of cotton in it, but it's too late. You women now have been so infected that you spend to the tune of $6.5 billion every year going to doctors getting those shots of ground infection that come from them drawers. They get, that's the game. Anytime somebody know more about a body that God put together for you than you do, they can manipulate you through your body. They can put it in your food. They put, they put hormones in chickens to make them grow. Y'all give the chickens to your children and wonder why they want to go give up some booty. 
It's the hormones that y'all have put in them have affected their sex organs so bad, and now y'all running around talking about teenage pregnancy, and we all folks talking about we didn't do it because you didn't have it. Two things I didn't have when I was a little boy. I didn't have hormones in my food messing up mine, and I didn't have television. The television wasn't invented. The only woman I saw in my house, the only naked woman in my house was my mama. And my mama wasn't about to look good to me. Not because she was mama, she just looked bad. <laughs> always complaining. What white folks, 12, 15 out there, come on, hair always nappy, bunions on her feet, talking all, all, uh, blah, 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 blah. you don't know sex. Uh, I don't know what my sex game would be like now if I had a television when I was a little boy looking at all them sexy women in my house on that television screen. So don't y'all underestimate these children. And don't y'all thank you, brother. Well, you can come back in. <laughs> okay. You got to go. Maybe it ain't so. <laughs> the game, the body, the body, the body. I'll give you a breast to feed the baby with. I'll come out of her belly. I'll crawl up in her bosom. I'm not crawling up to get no milk because the nipples on her breast, the steel don't come off for 24 to 36 hours. So I crawl on her to do two things, to pull on her breast to build up a breathing pattern. <gasps> and it also pulls a hormone into her bloodstream that as long as I'm alive on this planet, she's alive. She'll know if I'm feeling good or feeling bad. That's why they let y'all in hospital. If you don't believe it, check the record. The first time they let poor black women in the hospital was to have babies so they could separate the mother from the child because in order to get y'all, I had to break that bond. Now y'all worrying about the black family. The black family, why? The call is the family. Oh, girl, I'm not going to nurse no baby. I have flabby titties. And y'all didn't do it. And now y'all got big, firm titties and flabby children. <laughs> My food book, and y'all read it? The Great Night to Die. Came out in 1971, page 60, where I talked about cow's milk, the worst thing you put in your body, the number one killer of babies, number one killer of black folks last year. John Hopkins University had this seminar. Scientists came in from all over the world and said milk is the worst thing you can give to a child. Matter of fact, it's so bad you should stop it now. They don't say that about whiskey. Why? Because the number one ingredient in milk is not calcium. That's the game they play. There's about 300 other foods you can eat get more calcium than you get out of milk. The number one ingredient in milk is called casein. Casein builds a bone structure to carry the body's weight. Cow's milk has 300 times more casein than mother's milk because cow's milk got to do two things. It got to double the weight of the calf within four, two to four weeks, and it got to build a bone structure to carry a ton plus. Mother's milk has enough casein in it to do what? Build a bone structure to carry a maximum 175 pounds, and it got to double the weight of that baby within eight to nine months. So what do they do with casein? Commercially, they make kerosene out of casein out of cow's milk, and they make glue. Now, is it an accident that the number one milk company in the world, Borden's Milk, just happened to make Elmer's glue, or do they know something? <laughs> huh? And every country in the world that mothers is stupid enough and busy enough that they ain't got time to give their baby cow's milk, you have a thing called crib death, where there is. No mother that would do that, there is no crib there. Because unbeknown to these clowns, it's the glue that was in that stuff that some babies can throw it off and some can't. And that kills them. It's the game. That's the game. But then you got to really start understanding God. Because if I can mess up, if I can make you hostile and make you aggressive, and I can take you who I made and this junk sits over here and say the way to get to them, I'll make y'all a sex object and y'all stupid enough to go for that. Y'all in the beauty, y'all know the closest thing, when y'all get ready to get your makeup, you go buy it, the more money you pay for it, you have to come closer to your complexion, right? That's called, what's the word you use, natural? So if all y'all was back here on day one, and we're going to come up with lipstick, remember now, never been no lipstick. So don't, don't take what's already programmed. There's never been lipstick before. So now, you look in the mirror, look at your lips. What color lipstick you going to put on? Huh? What? Come on. Come on, wait, wait a minute now. He said natural, y'all just, how y'all get so smart and I get so dumb? <laughs> hmm? Do you know white folks put eye eyeshadow on? You know what eyeshadows do? Is to make your bloodshot eyes look whiter. Did y'all know that? Do you know there are some sisters blacker than the eyeshadow they wear? What's that about? 
What's that about? That's what white women needed. Because when I darkened my eyes, my eyes looked whiter. Where'd they get it from? They looked at you and saw how white your eyes were and had to get all the way up on you so they realized they were bloodshot. Then they said, mm, that darkness make them look whiter. <laughs> so think about a bunch of evil old men that decide I'll break your spirituality. I do two things. And they talking about black folks. I make you hostile. I make you aggressive. And I make you a sex symbol. And I make him the sex. And I make him believe he can conquer you. So now I'll make your lipstick red. Why? The blackest, blackest woman in this room I put up on this table naked. The whitest, whitest woman in the room I put on this table naked. Open up both of them's legs and look up in them. What color is it? That's what made them determine what color your lipstick was. That's how nasty it is. Now, y'all fall into these culture patterns. If you want to, you're going to pay a price. That's what that whole game. What other part on your body is shaped just like a vagina? What other part? That's what it is. These evil old nasty men. And it, it's a hand-me-down from here, a hand-me-down. Y'all hear people say, sugar diabetes run in the family? Because you ate what your mama ate, she ate what her mama ate, she ate. And when y'all break that, sugar diabetes will leave. And a handful of people, we and I, we raise families, them rich white folks raise dynasties. And they sit back there and they still use it from book one. They say, it sure look good. It sure look good. Say, hey man, the black folks, the, the niggas is rumbling. That scared little chump white folks. The real white folks sitting there saying, uh, yeah, be cool. So why come you not worried? They check down there with the binoculars. When them, them liquor stores, when them whiskey trucks are sitting down there full, when they stop coming back empty, we worry about them. As long as I'm saying, we're too emotional. You won't leave me. I'll call you a bunch of bees. And, and I'm tired, tired of black men. When they met you, you didn't have no drop. I'm so tired of hearing black men. Yeah, I met you. You had no drop. I said, can I just run across one black man that the sister left that she had draw before he met? <laughs> Yeah, man, I don't know where she's going. I mean, she not no girl ever pop the piss up. I mean, I mean, is it just one woman that had a tall nigga before you met? <laughs> now, see the white boy, the cold blooded white boy. I'm talking about that little chump we know, the real one. See, ain't but five white folks on the whole planet. Rest y'all's imposters. See, white ain't got nothing to do with the color. White's the attitude. If you ain't got some big, big billions of bucks, you can't have attitude. That real white boy, he's so cold blooded. He be sitting across the table from this lady. Me, he been married forty years. They big bucks, big bucks. You say to me, I think I'm going to leave and go it alone. I don't even look up. I just keep reading the Wall Street. It'll call sign to sign and work out whatever kind of arrangement you want. We still going to Afghanistan this summer? You don't get all emotional. Won't go upside her head and all that little kind of stuff. What I wasn't born, what I don't need, and what I can't manage, I still can do without. Go ahead. But then they'll play all these old games. I told my old lady, if you ever leave me or I'll leave you, the babies, you take them. I don't never want to see them. That ain't number chumps. Just like, it's just that's another way they can see y'all in cop. You know damn good and well, baby, if you was living out here and your old man was living in California, he ain't going to want no visitors right each week. You know what I'm saying? I told him, oh, this is your baby. You can't have And she got real upset. What do you mean you don't want to do that? She said, and them babies like y'all men is crazy. They be running that game now. You know, you had the children. Mm -hmm. Them babies closer to you than they are to the old man because y'all want to share a little personal thing. You be saving. You be saving us from them crazy niggas. They come to daddy, You know, y'all said that. They come to daddy, Don't let him know. No, don't, 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 don't say that in front of your dad. How many times y'all say Because you know we go off. Don't say that in front of your dad. Ho say it in front of me every night. Nothing happens. You know what I'm saying? Don't say that in front of your dad. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know that. My children, I look at my children. I know. Well, they're grown now, but I know they slept downstairs. I mean, no lady slept upstairs. I know if the house catch on fire. Them niggas would run up and get her. Now, wait a minute. Not that they mad at me. They just wouldn't even think about me. They were, I'm laying next to her. They wouldn't even say, wake up, the house, they go get her. Then they think about me after they got outside. They be throwing pebbles up to the window trying to wake up. Wake up, Dad. Wake up, Dad. And I'm stupid enough to wake up, try to get the mom, and they know they got her. <laughs> and that's why they keep telling y'all about fasting and praying. That's why they keep telling you about fasting and praying. Every Bible. Talks about that. And y'all keep ignoring it. Go through all the Bibles, you'll never see the word cocaine. Never see the word pussy. Now think about it now. It's not in the Bible. They got some filthy words in the Bible, pussy ain't in it. 
Never see the word Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola. Never see the word beans and rice. But yet, fasting and prayers in the Bible. We can use cocaine and marijuana, which ain't never been in the Bible, but fast and pray. And you talk about fast and pray. If I say, go home and fast and pray, first thing you say, you're going to say, I met this brother, man. I'm going to fast and pray. You know what your loved one says? Did you check with a doctor? Did you check with a doctor when you did coke? <laughs> did you check with a doctor when you raped that woman? And see, if I was a woman now, she don't rape me. Shh. All you got to do is just smile. They smile because they think you're going to say, what you smile about? I said, I've had AIDS. I ain't had no action in about three years. <laughs> and he ain't even put it in. He'd be, he be going to burn his pants. <laughs> Call all his friends. They put the word out. Yeah, hey, because the niggas scared AIDS. You know that? I'm looking at you. How pretty you are. If I was mad to you, I'd tell all the bloods you had AIDS. Well, no money, nobody be hitting on you. <laughs> you say, ooh, Richard, your friends are just so manable. They just, they just, they don't even flirt with me. Oh, I know. They just think, of, you know, she has AIDS. I just, you know, I just, I don't tell nobody. But, uh, you know, I've been loving her since I was in grade school. When I found out she had it, I just said, well, just go ahead through with it. You know? <laughs> Imagine a nigga that was hitting on Maggie Johnson's old lady. I ain't gonna get into that now. <laughs> I know he's somewhere trying to tell everybody he was just playing. Oh, I ain't had him. <laughs> and Magic Johnson ain't got nothing. Ain't nothing but a damn white folk do that. Magic Johnson ain't listen. Did you hear that? He said he took a test. They told him today. Twelve hours later, he owned the press conference. I mean, that ain't enough time for his old lady to stop hollering. You got what? Two things I do. They talk about second opinion. You know they say second opinion. If anybody told me I had AIDS, I get about 500 opinions. <laughs> and I told my old lady, if anybody tells you she had a hysterectomy, she gonna get 10,000 opinions. So let no one doctor tell you that and you get rid of that. No. Oh no. I don't know how you women do it. You go there and catch it. called hysterectomy. It means cut your thing out. That's what it is. And then got nerve enough to leave it there. At least you take it with you. Don't leave that thing there. What do you wait men like that? Do you think they throw them away? I bet they got them somewhere now. They have. I ain't lying. I swear to God, you know them white boys, Lord, they even you said. Ooh, where are you going? I'm going to the same place. And they be there breathing. You know, no, you, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, do you think he's going somewhere that good? I mean, think about it. So I told my old lady, if you ever get stupid enough to let the doctor give you his bed, you better bring that thing home. <laughs> oh, she got that. What you gonna do with it? I'm gonna hang it on the wall next to that moose thing. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I mean, I mean, a doctor look up in you. They got these old funny E G Y N. What they call them old funny doctors? You looking up them booty doctors? E Y O B G Y O B. That don't even sound right. Listen to that. Where you, where you going? O B O B. Oh, babe, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You serious look up there and talk about you got infected, you want to take your thing. Check my joint, I got infected. You better not try to cut it off. Call clap. Shut my joint off because I got infected and see if the fight don't start. <laughs> yeah, I never the biggest argument I ever had with my old lady. She went to the doctor, you know, I never was home much, so she said, I, I got to go to the doctor, uh, get my breast checked uh, for cancer. And I got nervous, you know. And I said, well, you know, I'm way out here fighting for human dignity and stuff, ain't got much time at home. So I said, well, come on, baby, I'll take you. So we in the car, and, 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 and I said, well, you know, I, I don't know what to say. I'm embarrassed because I ain't been home and didn't know she had cancer the breast, you know. So I said, well, baby, I, uh, I, I'm just sorry. She said, well, what's wrong? I said, well, I'm sorry you got cancer. She said, I didn't say I had cancer. I said, well, you said you would go and get your, your breast checked for cancer. She said, no, I do that every year. <laughs> You don't have cancer, <laughs> but you get your titties checked every year. See, I just get right down with it. She said, yes, I get my titties checked every year. But she put me in my place. So I said, well, I want to get that cool. So I start driving some more. Because I stopped because I get ready to get down. <laughs> well, I stopped and I said, well, then I, y'all know I got a good mind, right? And I like to see things. Right? So I said, you think I could go in and, and watch the machine that you use to check your breath? She said, what machine? <laughs> I 
I say the machine that the doctor used every year to check your titties to see if you got cancer. That's the machine I'm talking about. She said, he don't use no machine. He do it with his hand. Now, baby, I didn't even pull over. I stopped right in the middle of the street. <laughs> right on the highway. <clears throat> Opened up the door, went and took out, backed up again. They never hit her. Backed up against the tree and explained that to me. Oh, I really got to ask you. You telling me that you got a doctor once a year playing with your titties, then send me a bill. I mean, the chump ain't even doing it for free. She says, on the insurance. You mean it, they got a titty insurance where doctors can play with your titties and insurance play with it. Damn, what are y'all doing? I don't know about So she said, just cool down, cool down, cool down. Because see, y'all know we crazy. And you know we go off. You know we go off. So she said, that's why the children get y'all leave us. Yeah. <laughs> I asked my daughter one day, I said, have you ever caught me with another woman and I had a gun getting ready to blow your mother away and you had a gun, what would you do? She said, I'd blow your way, precious little girl. I said, now reverse it. If you caught your mother with another man, she was getting ready to blow me away and you had a gun, what would you do? She said, you know mother wouldn't do that. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm saying, I said, wait a minute, baby. What do the doctor do? He said, he takes my breath. Have you ever seen that? He takes my breath and he feels the lungs. I said, okay, baby, let me get back. Let me cool down. Let me, let me go over this again. He takes normal hands, just with five fingers on it. He touches your breath and feels the lungs. Now, the type of lumps, we're talking about the lumps that I used to eat in cold oatmeal, a lump. And he said, yeah. I said, well, I mean, don't you think I could do that? I mean, you think I need some special training to grab your titties? I mean, I'm grabbing them anyway, so just an extra five minutes of checking for lumps, you know. She said, but, but you don't know what a lump feels like. Now I really got mad. I turned the car around, we went home. I said, I'm going to cook some oatmeal, which I hate. And I'm going to get in the refrigerator and put some lumps in it. And I'm going to put my hand in this oatmeal. And I put her hand and I said, feel it, that's a lump. Now put your hand on your breast, that's a titty. That's a lump, that's a titty. Now we'll never go to the doctor again. Titty feel like this, lump feel like that. Anytime you feel titty, feel like lump, then you go to the doctor. But that's a game. You women just let them whack stuff off you. Yeah. And then they got nerve to go say, Doctor, my friend say he think I need a hysterectomy. Mm -hmm. Just on your friend's word. And so somewhere what we got to do is just understand that God gave us a great body. And and if we do it right, racism has messed it up. That's why we got to stop tolerating it in some kind of way, stop tolerating it. And we got to start understanding. You know, every powerful white person on this planet that controls anything use astrology and the real ones use numerology and then they got you believing that spookism when you think of when you think of haiti you think of what voodoo, voodoo. you know why you go to the caribbean okay we go to uh martinique they sound french right you go to the bahamas they sound english right and act like english with a little knickers on Go to a black courtroom and send them white wigs on, right? Haiti is the only African group that stayed African. And they take their nastiness and make us say they voodoo. Dig what it is? You go there, they still do the drugs. They still got the hair. You understand what I'm saying? And they sit and say, they voodoo. Michael Jackson. I got ten children, baby. If I melt them all down and come out with one Michael, I'd be happy as a father. Because Michael know who he is. And he's so strong, them white folks is running game out. And Michael got tricked one time. Me and Michael, it, there was a time when nobody closer to Michael than me. I'm the one who changed his life. I'm the one when the little 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 dude passed out when he was doing Tin Man. Look at that old movie. Oh, yeah, the it's weird. And everybody wondered how they was gonna finish when his lung I went in and put his lung back together in a day and a half. God bless me with her. And if y'all remember reading Jet magazine when Randy was in the accident. 
They were going to amputate his leg. I was on my way to Iran, and I said, I ain't got time, but I'll have my wife and my children mix something and send it. And it was a front page story on Jet, uh, on Jet Magazine say, thanks to Dick Gregory, I can walk. Now, I've been blessed. Bring it to me, wipe it out in six days. Ain't nothing you can have can be wiped out in six days. That's, that's God, God talked and I listened. But I can't boogie. I can't do that electric slide, but you can bring cancer to me and I can get rid of it. Oh, yeah. But that was a game. That was the whole game, the whole, I mean, the whole piece. That, and, so, and so consequently, when you, you, you sit, so, so me and Michael got real close. And one thing I didn't understand about Michael, as close as me and Michael was, when Michael can canceled out his concert, when he collapsed in, in Indianapolis, and they were getting ready to cancel out of 300 million concerts, he said, I got to call Dick Gregory. It's in a private plane, and he will make the decision if I can go over this concert or not. That's how close we are. But I know there was something strange about Michael, as close as we was. And let me tell you about my mind, our brilliant mind. And let me tell you why I'm telling you that. Because Michael, with his feelings, used to go, sin for me. And for three or four days, we'd sit in a dark room with a mic, and he'd just ask me questions and ask me questions. So I don't believe this young boy getting this kind of knowledge who understands the elders. Understand that. Okay, understand that. Talk to me about love. Talk to me about children. Talk to me about charity. But it was one thing I couldn't understand about Michael and our relationship. Okay, how, when I got to that house, if I got there early, I had to wait till he put his makeup on and that old silly hat and that glove. And I never understood it till he got on the Oprah show. And he do have that disease. That's what he was hiding. I never understood it. How can I be this close, man? And you got to put this makeup on. And it must have got real bad because he called my wife one day and said, tell, tell me. He didn't say you can't get in touch. He said, there's a woman I'm assigning to him. So it must be getting that bad. But let me tell you about Michael. Michael did the one with Eddie Murphy and them. Yeah. was kings and queens. Yeah. And then when he put his next record out, white folks shut it down, baby. Shut it down. Let me tell you something about Michael Jackson. Michael never gave an interview to a white reporter in his life until they said the only interview he gave it to was Bob Johnson or Jet Magazine. And anything you ever read up until just recently about Michael Jackson, they took it out of Jet or Ebony Magazine. And when he signed that $35 million out to do that Coca-Cola commercial, I got a call and he said, Greg, you know, I don't take pop with niggas. I said, I can't make no decision. But if you're going to do it, then just do two things, man. You're strong enough. Tell them you have to do a commercial. You have to do a, you can hold a press conference. You don't drink soda pop. And Michael, if y'all ever see that Pepsi-Cola commercial, Michael held a press conference. I don't drink soda pop. What was he saying? Soda pop bad. One soda pop make your blood stream 10,000 times more acid than God meant for it to be. So keep giving it to the children, yeah? Keep giving to the children and wonder why they're acting a fool and wonder why they're stabbing you one day. Yeah? I'm going to say it again. One bottle of soda pop makes your bloodstream 10,000 times more acid than God meant for it to be, okay? Now, y'all go and play the game. And i tell you something else about that Michael Jackson commercial. If you ever get to see it, Pepsi-Cola and Michael could not be in the same frame. And that's how strong he is. And when he was doing his, his uh, thriller, was that the one? The biggest one in history. When he's doing his thriller, when he's out there on tour, that's before the, the uh, Jehovah's Witness kicked him out. Every Saturday at the height of his power, and he's the biggest entertainer in the world, he would put on his wig and his beard and his cap, and he would go out with his watchtower and knock on people's door. That's Michael. He didn't pay nobody to do it. He didn't give two, three million dollars to the church. He did what all Jehovah's Witnesses are supposed to do, is be a witness. So y'all go and play your games, okay? Tell me about Michael, okay? And, and let me tell you something about Michael. <clears throat> Little Richard makes about $4 million every six months on royalty. He don't get it. Y'all know that. That's why he's so bitter. But that cat must have been a genius that he ain't get a record and only God know when, but his worldwide royalty. But white folks have always took his stuff way back then. Who was protecting him? Michael Jackson, they told him not to buy the Beatles stuff. He bought it for $48 million because Michael runs his company. Don't know white folks run his empire. And today, that $48 million investment is worth $400 million. And when he bought it, to his surprise, he found out that the Beatles owned all of Little Richard. He made one phone call, and you ain't heard it till now, and called Little Richard and gave it all back to him. That's Michael Jackson. All right? That's Michael Jackson. You ain't supposed to hear that part because I can't let you know about the real family. 
And if you black nigga don't know who your blackness is, that's your fault. That's right. He wrote the whole record, We Are the World, by his little genius self and put everybody else's name on it, wrote it in 20 minutes. And they got y'all running around believing Michael some kind of freak. <clears throat> but they got these niggas out there in Hollywood throw black women over the balcony every two years, but y'all don't talk about what's wrong with them. That's the game. And y'all got to understand that game. And y'all got to understand that you got something in your head that's so important. If you want to plant some turnips, what's the first thing you got to do? Huh? Okay, and then you got to, you got to just, before you put the seed in, you're going to do what? Dig a little hole, right? And then you're going to plant the seed in. And now if you plant the seed in, you got to do something else to plant. No, no, you got to do something before you plant. But if you, if you put it in the hole, you got to do something. Cover it up. Cover it up. Now listen to me real good. And when you cover it up, what happens? Anybody know? No, 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 no. When you cover it up, something happens the first three days. Germinate. Germinate. But tell me what that means, sister. Tell me what it means. Ah! Ah! Where is it? It dies. It dies. So now you put the seed in the hole. You cover it up and it dies. It's called germination. And then out of that depth, but now how do it die? Anybody know what happens? What, what do it die? Break his leg, heart attack, suffocate, how, ah, suffocation. Now you know what they mean without a crucifixion, there'll be no. Okay, now, once you plant a seed, what happens to it? And the way it dies is called what? Suffocation, right? Okay, now. The red cross, is that the way it looks? Yeah. And the Christian cross, huh? <clears throat> What's your name, sister? Money. Money. I'm going to have a baby. Sperm comes out of me into your egg. Got that? Got that? What happens first three days? <laughs> Come on. Just say what happens. You say it. Okay, don't know more about the damn turnip. Don't know more about a carrot than you do about God's life. It dies the same way. A seed here, a seed here. How do it die? Suffocate. Suffocate. All right? The Romans say in order to heal these heathens, these criminals, let's take them back to what? Their mother's what? Womb. So when they made the first jail, a dungeon was damp, dark, leaky, and wet like a vagina. But they made one mistake. They didn't put the heartbeat in it. And if you ever want to reform folks in jail, put the heartbeat in it. The army put the heartbeat in it. It's called Cadence. That's why they can take your little sissy, faggot little son that can't lift a, a basket of coal and in six months' time land on the ground trying to kill somebody because they put them Cadence there, which was the heartbeat, and took him all the way back to his mama's womb and they really made him as a killer. All right? And that's what the school deliberately do because as long as you don't know nothing about yourself. All right? Now, so the sperm comes out of here. How many sperms do I drop into her? 500 million. 500 million. The one that impregnates her. Do you know how special you are? Because what got you here, 500 million sperms went into your mother's vagina, and the one responsible for you outran a half a billion other ones and got there first. You know how special you are. There's no one sperm come out and just slowly walk up the fallopio tube and just get there when more. Baby, they hit the ground running. You are the best of a half a billion. So why somebody got to tell you you are somebody? All right, now, a half a billion came out. Okay? Now, one got there. And when he got there, it smothered it, right? Now, when they got ready to make a jail, what was the jail? A vagina, right? So then the Romans were so dirty, they say, let's kill them the same way they come in. What, what did I put in her? But it came out of my what? Okay, 
So y'all running around thinking y'all got some Christian cross around your neck. The Romans invented it. That's the extension of my penis. That's my belly. And that's the other part that goes up. That's why the red cross is different than the Christian cross. Y'all walk around with a dick around your neck. Now y'all cut it. Any way you want to cut it, that's what that is. And God or Jesus didn't invent The Romans invented that to kill people. Now, how did they kill you? They put your hands here, here, and here. Now, if, if I'm held up by, by my feet and my arms, what happens to this part of my body? After so long, the diaphragm refused to work, right? And I died from what? The Romans took this dick and killed them on the cross the same way they come in. And y'all don't know that story? They bring them, take them out the same way they bring them in, through suffocation. And y'all got some stuff that some, some old men then put together and run that game down. King James was such a weird homosexual, he hated the fact that he had to come through the belly of a woman, so he did what to his mother? Kill them. Kill them. And y'all got that book in your house and don't know his history? Ain't nothing wrong with the book, but at least you ought to know the man that wrote it and the 27 people he had to reinterpret that Bible, he murdered all of them two days after they got through it. And y'all don't know that. That's why y'all can be ignorant enough to have a gun and a Bible in the same house and don't realize when you put a gun and a Bible in the same house, the gun just cancels the Bible out. Because I just say, God, I know you, God. I know you created the whole universe, the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean, but I know you, but I just don't believe you can protect my house. That's what you say to God. Y'all looked at that mess out there in the Midwest. I went out there and checked it. Never in the history of America have there been a disaster like that mess in the Midwest. And you know what caused it? Sandbags. Sandbags. Sandbags is a violation. Sandbags. Okay? Look, the water's coming here. We want to protect this house, these houses over here. So what do we do? Put sandbags up here, right? Now, if we wanted to light up this whole town, we take the river and dam up some of the water, right? And that river, it dammed up, creates enough energy to create what? Electric, right? Now, if you take a part of a river and box it up, and it creates enough energy to light up a whole town, how did Cracker stupid enough to dam up the whole river with sandbags and don't realize that energy got to go from where? <laughs> and now they got a billion sandbags, now that the flood is gone, with all that filth in it, you ain't seen the disease, it's going to happen now. Okay. Did y'all see two weeks ago the big flood that hit Bangladesh, killed 2,000 people? You didn't hear nothing about it the next day, did you? Because the water came in left, they don't use sandbags. How many of y'all live and you little girls are eating out? Boy, had flash floods, fill up the basement, basement water, come to the basement and leave, right? Because everybody's basement got water, there ain't enough water to go up to the second floor. But if you're going to hold it out your basement, <laughs> and let it fill up my basement, <laughs> on your fingers, count. On your fingers. Don't get smart on me now. Christ was crucified what day? Friday. How many days taking the rise? All right, count that on your. I don't say Sunday. I ask you how many days. How many days taking the rise? Count on your fingers three days from Friday what you get. All right. Everywhere in the world, Easter celebrated on Easter Monday, except here with all this crazy ignorance. The Egyptians were so dumb and ignorant, they thought because the sun dies once a year and three days come back, they thought if they could build a pyramid, that when they died, if they put them in this side, they would come back in three days and they put the whole family, all their riches in there. And when y'all go there to look at a pyramid, y'all going to look at an ignorant ass coffin. <laughs> a coffin. That don't work. And you know, same above as below. Stand up for a minute, baby. When she stands up here, the law of physics says there's another one of her going this way. All right? That's why if she's 500 pounds, just stand still, feel me pressure, okay? There's pressure on her. And that's what happens when y'all lose weight. Every time you lose 40 pounds, you got me lose 40 to 50 pounds. 900 pounds of pressure falls off your back, don't you? People call it anxiety attacks. That's that pressure, okay? The law of physics. Same above as what? So if you got a pyramid here, there's an invisible pyramid flipped down, right? So let's make it. But if Star David comes on the Jews, ain't invented nothing. Star David ain't nothing but the pyramid and flipped over. Now you can see it when you go to the edge of the lake and it's clear, you see the other you, right? 
You know it's a hole in a glass, but when you put ice in it, get your table wet, right? Y'all be kind of figure that out, call it do condensation. Condensation, mom, there's a hole in the damn glass. <laughs> and you know that every time I come to your house and get on your good table, you give me that little thing to put in my glass, right? And you ain't give it to me because you think I'm going to feel something, right? And so what we're saying is that when you see, now, then that means if you had a baby today, I can count 270 days back. Y'all know that? And find out the exact day you got conceived. All right? 270 days back from the day. Don't give me all that old doctor said this, doctor said that. If you drop that baby today, I can count 270 days back. Two, how many? Add that across, you get what? Huh? Huh? Stand up for a minute. Stand up for a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We got, thank you. We got nine holes in our body. It ain't no accident that this is the cycle of nine. She got nine female holes. I got nine male holes. So to complete a game of golf, we got to play two nine holes, which is 18, male and female. That's what they're doing, baby. That's what the thing breaks down to. That's what it breaks down to. Now, here we go. If, if Christmas can only come 270 days from Good Friday, okay? 270 days. So if Good Friday changed from year to year, that means Christmas got to change, right? So what they know is that Christmas can't come before December the 24th and can't come after January the 6th, all right? How many days is that? From December the 20th? I'm sorry, December 25th. December 25th. How many days is that? Come on, yell it out. Come on, come count on your fingers. <laughs> From December the 25th to January 6th is how many days? 12 days. Now you know why there's a song called the 12 days of Christmas? Okay? None of that's accidental. How can y'all be locked into something, spend this much money on, and manipulate it and don't know it? Stand up for me, brother. This is the North Pole. Y'all know that? On a human being. South Pole is the feet. There's a, there's a soft spot. Oh, y'all know about that soft spot back there? What comes out of that? Heat. So that's why they call it the what? No, no, no. Come on. The, who said it? The chimney. All right? So this is what pole? Soft spot called what? That gland underneath there before they changed it was called Santa. Every time you breathe in, there's a hole in your skull, in your head. Every time you breathe in this way, there's an oil right here that when you exhale, this skull rolls back and drops some oil down in that hole. Y'all got that? But now, on Christmas Day, you get that all lubricates your body. So anything that lubricates your body makes you work right, keeps you young, right? So on Christmas Day, the real day of Christmas, God gives us a big old bunch of that all. Now, you know why they say stand up again. On December the 25th, on Christmas morning, Santa comes from the North Pole and brings gifts to the children. Thank you. That's what the game is about. They take what God gave me and turn it into a code, and they got me believing I'm supposed to be going here and learning two and two is four, and how to spell Betty, and I love you, and you love me. Come on. Now, nah, y'all want to go home and get your calendar, you want to find out the real day of Christmas, count 270 days from this past Good Friday, and you know when the real day hits. And that thing just falls off and hits. And so, as we get into fasting, and then we'll get into, who all was here yesterday? That thing I gave y'all, she went and ran it off. Okay? Now, listen to this. God. Hitler produced a sixth division. Any in this room ever heard of that sixth division? Yeah, raise your hand. Nobody talk about it. They don't like no movies about it. That sixth division was to warfare what Michael Jordan is to basketball. I mean, they came together and almost came to a God consciousness, super inhuman. And that sixth division was so mean 
that it was the only army in the history of the planet that they had to take their supplies, including their food, 400 miles ahead of them. Ain't a, never been an army that wouldn't slow up for their dinner. That damn 6th Division, if it wasn't there, they just kept moving. So they went in and hit Russia. They hit Stalingrad and Leningrad. And then they said, Stalingrad is here, Leningrad is here, the lake is behind him here. They say, keep a board for half your army here, keep half your here. We take these other half and go into Moscow. And that 6th Division went into Moscow, baby, and in a day and a half, they killed a million five hundred thousand Russians in a day and a half. And now it's Tuesday night. And, and they sent word back to 6th Division, to Hitler, tomorrow the world. Y'all ever heard that statement that they made? You know why? If you ever get, get time, look at a map of Russia. Russia had 22 time belts. Did you know that? 22 time changes. Like we in the Eastern Standard Time go to Chicago, right? They have, tw that's how big Russia is. They got 22 time changes. Okay? So if you look at the map of Russia, Anywhere in Russia with airplanes now, you less than an hour away from any country in the world. That's what they meant. But something happened. Y'all want to argue about God? They don't do no movies about it. Don't nobody talk about it because evil old men don't want you to know the power of God. They had left this group where? In Stalingrad, remember? Left the other group in Leningrad. They took that other half of that 6th Division and went in and kick Russians' booty to the tune of 1.5 million. And then Wednesday morning, God sent snowflakes and stopped that 6th Division in its track. And they all surrendered. Did I hear somebody say something like that? Yeah. What did you say? Uh, froze, to froze to death. Froze to death. Froze to death. This this, this group that was superhuman, well, the Russians helped them. You know, the Russians took all their clothes off of them and put them buck naked in the snow. That's why when everybody starts talking about the Geneva Convention, the Russians don't say nothing. <laughs> Froze to death. Did you hear me? Destroyed the sixth division. Now watch this. Meanwhile, this group over here don't know what happened to this group, right? These groups is over here in Stalingrad and Leningrad. That God force came through. What did I tell you was behind them? Water. Froze that water up so that them Russians laid railroad tracks across the lake and put them freight trains out there and brought them troop trains up behind them and wiped them out. Laid the railroad trains across the lake because the universal God force froze the lake so they brought the troops across the lake and flipped up on from behind. Now, the reason I tell you this story, don't nobody talk about that. Because they don't want you to believe that it was Eisenhower and VD Day. That wiped them out. That same God force that wiped out here. So who else did it wipe out there in Russia? Napoleon. Had a bad army just went to Russia at the wrong time. And so I, I say to you today that you just know who you are and know that you count, that you do make a difference, and that you are important. And now, before we get into the fast and we get out of here, I had a paper I wanted to show you. From there. Stand up, sister, we can say. What paper did she say this was? Atlanta. Atlanta. Now, I, I just want you to kind of read something that I marked. Just start up just a little, just a little closer here, right over there. Listen at this. Do y'all remember the name? No, 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 don't get, don't get in there. Just, just, read, just read what I marked. Okay. Mr. Darden and what sheriff officers said was an act of random violence unrelated to his status. How does he know that? How does he know they didn't know who he was? How is this sheriff going to say it was just a rant? They didn't know that was Michael George. Go ahead, finish that. Listen to what he said. Of random violence unrelated to his status as father of one of the world's wealthiest and most famous athletes. Go ahead, now. Mr. Demary and Green are being held without bail. Sheriff Stone... Okay, hold it, now. Now watch this here now. This continues. We're going to skip around. This continues on page 8. Y'all need to get this paper when I finish telling you something. Page 8 on the back. Just read up one line ahead where I marked. An autopsy shows Green and Mr. DeMary allegedly drove... Stop there. Okay, now run one line over where I marked. 
It's three days later, Sheriff Stone said Green and Mr. Demiria were... All right, right up there. <laughs> on Green, wait. Belonging were found on Green and Mr. Demiria. Now, now, look. Every time this white man talk about these two damn murders, he calls the nigger Green and the white boy Mr. Get that paper. This man has such a passionate hate for niggas that he's dealing with two murderers. One he refers to all through this article as Green. And the white boy he calls Mr. How much do you hate me? That if you really believe that these two murdered him, why is one the white called Mr. and the black referred to by his If you got that much hate for me as a black man, how much hate did you have for Michael Jordan? How much hate did you have for one of the richest niggas in the world? What did y'all do to him? What did y'all do? And listen to me. Listen to me. Niggas like me is tired of working for y'all. Y'all got the same God conscious. I didn't get this from a Harvard, Yale, SIU mentality. I've got this because I worked. I've got this because I spent some time when I should have been hugging my children. But you, my child, you, my child, I would rather save the whole family than mine. And so I spent a lot of time doing things that normally you wouldn't do. So when I picked up the paper today, I caught it quick. I was sitting in the bathroom taking an enema, takes me an enema every day. And I was reading the paper. And I said, mm, wait, mm, wow, mm. I don't believe this. And I put the paper down, but I said, oh, nigga, you started your stuff again. And I picked it back up. And I always travel with that pen so I can mark it. I never, before I put my money in my pocket, I put my marking paper because I know what that paper's about. Take a gun here. This is a gun. Stand up, brother. Turn around so they can see you. Hold the gun out like you're going to shoot it. All right? Now, put it in your mouth and pull the trigger. You can't do it. Take, look at it. Go. Do it again. And yet still they told us Foster, the president's man, put the gun in his mouth. You can't do that. It's too discomfortable. When I'm going to kill myself, I'm not going to go through no changes. I ain't going to scale a 15-story hotel to jump off the top. <laughs> and whatever they flashed on them after three days, and nobody could believe he would do that, they changed their mind. Now, everybody said, yes, he did. Oh, he was so depressed. He wrote a note, and after he got through the note, he tore the note up and threw it in his brain. How many of you ladies ever wrote a love letter and got mad, tore it up, put it in your purse? If, look, if you write a suicide letter and carry it up, that means you just canceled the what? <laughs> Isn't that normal? If I'm back from writing a suicide letter, I mean, I just canceled my suicide, right? And then what I'm telling y'all is, I did not get this. Not get this. At all. Because of some school. I got it because I took God's consciousness. Back here, all the knowledge and wisdom that ever was and ever will be, all y'all was born with. And all you have to do is be still and listen and know that I am God. Turn to page 42, we'll get quick to the fasting and we'll get to your weight loss, but that just takes two minutes because y'all ain't going to do it anyway. Uh, 84, I'm sorry, baby. 80, 80, 80. Uh, oh, there you go. Okay, listen. We're going to get out of 86. Listen. The blood's in the crypts. Blood's in the crypts. Stand up, baby. No, no, show it. Fold this like this for me here. What book? What's the name of that book here? Put your thumb under there so you don't lose my page. What's the name of the book? Listen. Close. Listen good. Hold it. Listen close. What's the name of the book? Conspiracy. Yep. Hierarchy. The Committee of 300. Conspiracy. Hierarchy. Committee of 300. Who wrote it? Who wrote it? Dr. John Coleman. Dr. John Coleman. Who do you work for? There it is. It's right next to it. A former member of British M16. That's the CIA. The British CIA. So you know he know what he's talking about, right? Okay. Now let me tell you what he said they do. Well, go ahead. Finish reading. Rip the lid off the conspiracy group with no, no national boundaries. No national boundaries? 
Oh, above the laws of all land. And control every aspect of the politics, religion. Oh, wait for what? Politics, religion. See, there's a difference between religion and God. God ain't no Baptist. God ain't no Christian. All of that is supposed to lead me to this convention. But when I come here and find the Bonner Brothers, I get off my plane. I dared him to try to keep me on the plane once I get to Atlanta. I need this plane to get here so I can take the religion to get here. But once you deliver me to God, back up. And if you can't deliver me to God, then let me get on Delta. Right. <laughs> Controls what, sister? Politics, religion, commerce, industry, banking, insurance, mining, and even the drug trade. Okay? Now, turn to that page and listen to this here real good. Listen to this. What we mentioned? The blood and the who? Listen to this here. Gang war wars were carefully planned at Stanford, deliberately designed... Stanford University created gangs across this country. The great Stanford University. They was the assignment to put a protocol together to create these gangs, okay? Stanford. And these old bloods and crips is running around killing one another and thinking some attitude they got. They doing that of a well-calculated plot. All right? Go ahead. And they put a movie and a play together to make it work called West Side Story. All right? They took some Puerto Ricans who don't nobody like and made a love story out of killing and glorified it. Y'all remember it? Now listen to this. Gang wars were carefully planned at Stanford, deliberately designed to shock society and cause ripples of disturbance. Thank you, dear. Here, that's what this game's about. That's how deep it is. All right? There's something in black men's bodies. You barbers, check it, because y'all going to start losing your customers that these folks want. And when the riots broke out in Los Angeles, they said we arrested 18,213 people the prosecutor said, we can't account for just 8,000. 10,000 black men got ripped off on the false pretense that that was a ride. Where'd they ship them? I think they shipped them to a naval base in Oregon. Why? Because there was a train coming out of Tennessee, if y'all live there, that derailed six months ago on its way to that naval base and had 300,000 pairs of handcuffs on them. Why are they using them in handcuffs? What is it i got in my body that's valuable? i tell you what it is, this thing called interferon sells for $22 billion a pint. And don't blame it on white folks. If niggas will stand out on the street corner and sell dope to my little children, then don't tell me them same thugs wouldn't rip me off to make $22 billion. That's a game. And so I, I say to you today that you have to keep your head open, you have to keep your mind open, and what is the best way to do that? Rest. 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 How many days, how many hours you supposed to work a day? Eight. How many hours is it two a day? So if you take eight from 24, you got what? How many hours you supposed to sleep a day? And if you track that from that, you got what? You got eight hours left. How many meals are you going to eat? Just do it real quick. How many meals are you going to eat for me? Come on, give me three meals a day. How long is it going to take you to eat those three meals? Come on, just quick. Come on, we ain't got three hours. Uh, three hours. Okay, it was three hours. So now you got what left? Okay, but we ain't cooked the meals. How long is it going to take you to cook it? Two hours, so we take two from five, we got three. Hey, we ain't went to the store yet. Let's go to the store. One, well, one and a half hours. So now you got an hour and a half left. You ain't peed, you ain't doo-doo, you ain't had sex, you ain't made a phone call, you ain't cooked a child. When you go on their schedule, it's not enough hours in the day. That's what it's about. As long as I can get you into a negative balance, I've got you. And they're doing some fantastic stuff on sleep. All the sleep you miss, there's a register in there. Y'all hear about this debit, the debit now? And you got to pay for it, even if you fall out while you drive it. All right? That is controlled by God. You're going to give me that sleep back. So that's the games they play. So why does somebody got to tell y'all to get into entrepreneurship? And when are y'all going to start training somebody to do the hair? Don't freak out with some old ego. Can't nobody do their hair like me. Die and see if they're going to grow nappy hair. Die. 
Who you think doing their hair while y'all here? Don't get into that trip. Oh, yeah, girl. I, I, I just wish I know what you do is do what white folks do. Look, I can look at you and tell you hipper than Queen Elizabeth. That broad ain't worked in her life. If she don't work, why you work? You understand? But that's what she's the queen. So what does that mean? She can sit on a toilet. You can't even visualize this sitting on a toilet with her drawers swooped up and farting and singing up that toilet like you do. But she do. There ain't no such thing as a queen fart or queen do do. It all stinks. <laughs> a queen, you put that. No, she farted just like my old lady do. Okay, let's run. You should fast one day a week. You don't have to know anything about fasting, fast one day a week. You know? I know you drink one day a week. You didn't learn nothing about, I'm gonna drink this weekend. Cause I've heard people on the job, man, I'm gonna get drunk this weekend. And there's nobody bragging, I'm gonna get drunk this weekend. So, but did you study it? No, but when I tell you to fast, well, can I get some books on? No, the same books you got to teach you how to get drunk on the weekend, that's the book gonna teach you how to fast in one day. Cancer, sugar diabetes, high blood pressure, AIDS. 40 days fast, knock it out. Knock it out. Knock it out. Guy called me and said, my son died from, my son died from AIDS and, and uh, they gave him two days to live and I just, I knew if I could get you in there. And they put him on a fast. He said, but that'll kill him. I said, you said he'd be dead in two days. <laughs> Damn. A oh, white boy tell you then two days is okay. I tell you put him on face, you won't chastise me. That's why I don't even tell me. I tell black folks I'm a vegetarian. Say, well, well, well do, do you, do you, uh, uh, what do you do for protein? They don't even know how to spell it. <laughs> but I love black folks, so I'd be nice when I said, well, you know there's a lot of protein in the steak. Yeah, nigga, there's a lot of protein in the steak. How come you don't eat steak? I said, you know there's a lot of protein in the steak. I said, but cows don't eat steak. <laughs> and once you get through to them, you got them. Yeah, man, you're right. Now he want to get mad. You're right, man. Matter of fact, the meat I eat don't eat meat. <laughs> yeah, man, you well, wait a minute, man, you know. So I don't even get into that now, because I ain't got time to argue with brothers and sisters. I say, you're right. how many of y'all vegetarians? Well, you know, men, you tell blood you're vegetarian. They, get, they go off, right? So you know what I, well, you can't do it, but you're too nice lady. They say, what's your diet? Like I said, I don't eat anything that's fart, doo-doo, belt, or pee. And when you say that to them, they say, <clears throat> keep going. <laughs> Then on the way back, you look at this, nigga, you look good. <laughs> but you know all looking good means don't I don't look good. You know why that? You know what looking good is? When, when people tell you you look good, that means you're old. You know, can you see two 17-year-olds standing on the corner and say, girl, you sure look good. When they start telling you you look good, you're getting old. That's right. And when you start complaining about the heat, you ever seen no 15-year-old come up? It's so hot out here, I don't think I'm going out. No, they say, what time are you coming back so we can get out? There's 137, so what? So anytime you start worrying about the heat, don't worry about how cold it is. Come back in and put your gloves on. You don't tell you to put their gloves on. You don't put your gloves on because you cold in the summertime. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fast one day on juice or on fruit. Best, best, best one day fast. Well, the worst one day fast. I'm putting it just to save time. The worst one day fast is fruit. Eat all the fruit you want for one day. It helps the body, but it's the least beneficial. But it benefits. The second worst one, and I'm really using the word wrong, the second worst is fruit juice. The third worst is water. Okay? 24 hours, water. The fourth worst, which is the best, is nothing. Air. Now, if you really want to get rid of your condition, first just eat fruit for a month. It's not about any high blood pressure, no cholesterol, body gets, you know, whole that. I eat, I eat fruit, I'll, I'll get too skinny. I have cats come to me, tell me I make my money getting weight off people. But I got him coming and he said, uh, uh, where well, you got to gain weight? Well, I can't make no money on it, but I love the brother, so I tell him for free. I said, get you some bananas and some protein powder and put it in a shake, like a, in, a, in a blender, and, and mix the uh, fruit juice with it. Is that going to work? I said, ask the gorilla about the bananas. <laughs> See, you just got the reason with black folks. Just ask, and then there you go. He said, you right. You're right. Now, a dumb white boy be all the way out to the zoo. Ask the girl. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, and then he's going to do a whole damn report on, I went to the zoo. I saw the gorilla. Uh, the gorilla looked like the nigger. But notice something, black folks and white folks, that all black folks 
got long legs and short bodies. That's why white folks' suits don't fit us right. We got long legs and short bodies. White folks got long bodies and short legs. Gorillas got long bodies and short legs. Gorillas got thin lips and hair all over their bodies. So go back out there and check that gorilla from there. <laughs> See, gorillas got them little short legs. That's why they be walking like that. <laughs> All right, so we got that. The longest I've ever gone on water was 81 days. Well, y'all, y'all old enough when I was in New Orleans when I did it fast? I did 71 days, 74 days without eating anything on a scientific fast. I came out at 10 o'clock in the morning, took one ounce of my little powder, and at 2 o'clock that day I ran and walked from New Orleans to Baton Rouge to prove after 74 days of not eating that the human body does not need food, it needs nutrition. I celebrated my 70, my 47th birthday from running from Los Angeles, California to New York City, taking nothing but fruit juice and that little nutrition, average 50 miles every day for 71 days. And the brother who taught me how to do that is standing back there, Dr. Ward St. James. Right there. He was, uh, he was my high school coach. Beautiful black brother. Had a doctor's degree, two doctor's degrees. Most black folks didn't know how to spell them, but white folks didn't have no knees for those with a doctor's degree. So he didn't high school. <laughs> so I got the benefit from him. And he taught me how to run. And he taught me how to win. And I become the first black in the history of America to win outside the stereotype. The first black in the history of America to win a state cross country championship. The first black in the history of America to win the mile championship. And he taught my brother so good that my younger brother came behind me and set the world's record in the high school mile. And then one day I realized that I took my talent and I forgot God. Because unbeknown to my coach, Santa brother, that when I would walk up to, to run, I'd slap the chumps turn around. I'd slap the chumps on the butt. But I was really, I was saying, hey, how you going? I was really saying, I'll crush you in a minute. And I did, baby. Let me tell you, there, was, they, 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 there wasn't nobody on the planet that can whoop me. Believe me, if something came over me, that you run as fast as you can, I ran as fast as I want to. Am I right? I mean, something come on. I'd come behind them curves. Sometimes I'd be playing with them white boys. And one time, one of them got too far ahead of me, and he was raising his arms up at the tape. And I was coming around that turn. I said, God, get him. And I didn't know then what I know now. And that white boy was raising his arms. And I heard something go like, boom, just like that, a strange noise. And I beat him to the tape. I realized now that there's a power that can break you down and beam you. Y'all know that when y'all driving sometime and you got somebody sick and you got to go somewhere, you know you got 20 miles to go to sign, say 20, and then you drive about two seconds, another sign, say 11. Okay, now you know you got to pay back for that. So don't be all with you, understand what I'm saying? You hear me? Real good. In 1942, I want y'all to hear this good, and then we'll finish the fast, and then we'll tell you about your weight loss, and then we'll pass out the picture, and then take it back home and give it to your friends. In 1942, the number one football team in the nation was Boston College. They had an attitude because being number one, they weren't picked for a Rose Bowl game, and they weren't picked for a bowl game until the last game because they was playing Holy Cross, and that team was so bad, it was some kind of way they would have lost Holy Cross. Wouldn't nobody see the bowl game because back then they didn't have television, so they just made money off of the gate. You got that? So Holy Cross was, 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 was so bad, they'd lost all their games but two, and Boston College won all their games. Their team was so good, they had to have two co-captains. One was number 50, the other was 12. What's those numbers? 50, One was 50, the other was 12. Holy Cross, uh, 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 they were so outraged that the team was restless, angry. Cause they had, so the coach said, here's what we do. We're going to bring your family in, and Saturday night we go into a nightclub to celebrate the festivity. We'll teach them. So everybody had booked reservations to the nightclub to celebrate the festivity. That was to keep the anger down. You understand? So, you know, what do you mean you're not giving us these chunks? Well, a funny thing happened at the game that Saturday. Holy Cross didn't only beat them, but beat them 50 to 12. What was those two coach after the number? So now, if you was on that team and got beat that bad, you'd be so humiliated, you wouldn't feel like going away that night. To the club, right? Go check the records. That's the night the Coconut Grove nightclub burned to the ground, the greatest nightclub disaster in the history of America, and had they won it, all been dead. You better listen to God, because God don't have no. That's no in your little perverse now. God do not have no. You drop your baby out your arm and the baby die. That is not no. And we know that because if Hitler's mama would have dropped him and he died, that would have been God protecting the world. Did you hear me? God do not have no. Just like when you get in a plane and it be raining and snowing, and once that plane takes off, what do you see up there? Sunlight. 
There ain't no bad weather up there. There ain't no bad decisions with God. You walk out here tonight and go home and you get ready to walk out your shop and your car is flat. That's your God saying, rest with me, sister, rest with me, brother. There's an accident waiting for you. The only way I could get you off of it, I had to flatten that tire. But if you cuss enough, if you cuss enough, if you get mad enough, if you get evil enough, you'll lose my gift. And there's two banks. Two banks. What bank you got your money into? What's the name of it? United States. Close on the weekend. Close at a certain time. There's two banks. There's the one you got your money in, and there's one out there. And I tell you what, you better have some money in that one. It never closes, and will always balance out your account before they bounce the check. So if you're on your way to the airport to get on a plane that's going to wreck, and your balance is right there, a cab might hit your car. God got 10,000 ways of getting you off that plane. Girlfriend or friend might call and tell you about a disaster in their family. My son died. That cracker wasn't to kill Mega Evers. He was supposed to kill me. Della Beckwith was supposed to kill me. And my son died. And I hugged Mega when I left. I said, it's up to you now, baby. You got me out. He put him back. I was laughing. Baby, two months old. Two weeks old. And I could feel death all around me. And I said, wow, man, I, my, my, my job ain't complete. And they came and brought a strange message. Call, call your wife quick. Your, your son's dead. And then Mecca had that funny look. I said, no, no, baby. That death is on you now. That's pulling me out of here. Y'all better listen to God. And unbeknown to this brother here, I used my talent. The greatest runner in the history of the planet I could have been had I wanted to. Thank God I didn't. Great. But I never used it with love. When I walked on that line, I chopped you up. And if he was white, I chopped you up twice. And I, let me tell you how good I was, Santa brother. We talking about cross country. How many miles was that one was in high school? Two and a half miles, running, humping. I run behind him and, and say, I'm going to do it to your mama. I'm going to get your mama white boy. I'm going to get your mama white boy. Oh, I'm going to get you. Yeah, thank you. I mean, I dogged them. I would sing, oh, and they would break. And I'd run up the hill and hold my side. And then one day I'd say, God, I'm sorry I used your talent that way. Now let me use it to help people. So at 46 years old, I ran from L.A. to New York, averaged 50 miles every day for 71 days to dramatize world and domestic hunger. And let me tell you, there ain't no pain in the world that ever been dealt out of what I went through, but I knew it was purifying me. I knew it was cleaning me out for all the nastiness for all the evilness, for all the times I walked up on that line and didn't recognize that was another mother and father's child that I was running against. All the times that the folks I was running against was more sports person than me because they came to the line with love and admiration for me and I came with nothing but hatred and meanness. Couldn't wait to get there so I could chop them up. Well, I flushed that out. And so there's two gardens. There's that one in your backyard and there's your mind garden. God made this one fertile here. You got to go in there and pull out them weeds and plant whatever you want to plant. And remember, this is my mother here. We don't know what dad is. She on welfare. She got 12 other children. I'm four years old. I write a letter to Santa Claus. Can't even spell Claus. Put it to the North Pole. Go mail it. And you know a funny thing? Whatever I thought of here and put on that paper, I got for Christmas. Now y'all go back and remember when y'all was a child when y'all thought there was a Santa Claus. And the Santa Claus was in your mind, but you thought it was one, and you wrote a letter to Santa Claus, and whatever you asked for, you got. Because there's a God for us that don't say you get it predicated on the welfare check or predicated on dad or mom. It says whatever you can conceive and put down in my mind garden, even if it's negative, I grow you bad fruit. In a system with television and nastiness have made us grow bad crops. Now you got to go and pull that out. And there's no way to cleanse your body any better than fasting. And the best way to test it is take your go home and to get naked. And if you don't like what you see, something wrong. And if you and if you four five hundred pounds and like what you see, you need to go to a psychiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had this sister tell me. I had this sister tell me, she said, Brother Greg, you gonna be, can I call you? 
Did you bet number Leo gave me the I'll call you that. Thank you, baby. He said, he said, Brother Greg, look at me. I'm, I'm 455 pounds. She's walking like this. And she said, I'm your black sister on welfare. How you expect me, nigga, to pay that but Bahamian, the Bahamian diet, you got cost $19 a can. How you expect a poor black welfare sister like me to afford that? And you know, there are some black folks that are scared of black folks. Them niggas around me got back. I got all up in her face. Santa, Santa, brother. I got all up in her face. I'm scared of my mama was black. My daddy was everybody I know black. I got up in the face. I expect you to pay for it the same way you went to Kroger's and Safeway and AMT and spent so much money with them white folks. They gave you so much food, you went home and blowed up to 465 pounds. Now you gonna come to Brother Greg and want me to knock it off you for free. You swell up till you bust. <laughs> she say, let me buy two cans, my man. <laughs> All right, watch this. The name of my book is on this sheet here. Big Gravy's Natural Diet. Now, if y'all ever see me, you never know me hustle a book. Y'all never heard me sell nothing. You know, as long as y'all been coming to the lectures, I never tell nothing. The reason I'm saying about this book, there is no better fasting direction than, than I have in my book. And let me just say this here. One thing, when you go buy this book or take it out of the library, scratch one thing out, the honey. I didn't know when I wrote the book that more people die from honey every day in America than cocaine, okay? Because cocaine, honey is, the bee eats the pollen, right? right, right. Then it bursts the pollen up, right? right. That's called doo-doo everywhere else, all right? But it's already pre-digested. So when you put the honey in your body, it goes directly into the bloodstream, throws the blood sugar off, the brain gets the message, throws in the insulin, throws too much in, not got to throw in adrenaline. Some people can have to die when they give you autopsy, they say heart attack, it was the honey. What do you use? Maple syrup. Sugar's the number three killer on the planet. Now, as long as y'all willing to use sugar, don't say that. Okay? As long as y'all willing, I'm talking about if you really, because let me tell you, the thing is moving, and in five years, if your stuff ain't together, you can kiss it goodbye. You can feel something, now I don't have to tell you. And those of you all that's around people, y'all been around people and see people acting strange for no reason at all. People ain't got time to sit still no more. That's just vibration because the whole thing is it's a level of vibration. And so there's the ozone level that's burned up beyond repair. Now let me just tell you this, it's very important. There's something that's raging across this country they don't want to tell you about, it. it's called rabies. All right? They made a mistake the other day and slipped through that that little girl died in New York. Did y'all see that on the national news from rabies? Did y'all see that stuff in Jack in the Box? All right, now. If I'm eating some Cracker Jacks and get sick, and the government starts telling y'all to cook y'all's popcorn different, then it means there's something wrong with popcorn, not Cracker Jacks. If something happened in Jack in the Box and the government, as of next week, gonna put labels on all meat to tell you how to cook it, then it means it ain't Jack in the Box. The ozone level is giving all animals rabies. Now, all y'all that got them dogs and pets around the house, you better have them checked, because you're gonna come home one day and see your child and yourself scratch. And once rabies sit in and never change, 14 days later, you're going to have a mad person on your hands. That's this whole power of God. I did not give you niggas or white folks to hold hostage. I didn't give you animals to hold hostage. What kind of fool do you think I am as your God to give you a dog to be your friend? You're more friend to your dog than to the baby that came out your belly. I will punish you one day for that. You want to hear something else? Lou Gehrig's disease happened in houses that have a dog or a cat, 98% of the people. Why? Because when you hold me hostage, you think I'm your pet, you think I like you. I resent being people and I give off a secret gas off my body that will mess you up. I, your God, did not put an animal here to be your pet. I sent a child here to be your child. I sent this one here to be your companion. Y'all fight every night, then get out the bed, cussing one another and go feed a dog. What kind of God do you think I am? I got it, one. What kind of God do you think I am? And so what I'm telling y'all, I ain't telling y'all what to do with your pet. I'm telling y'all, y'all better keep your eyes open. Y'all better stop feeding those square spurs because they claim not they lick you. Do any of y'all live in New York? Anybody in New York? Do you know raccoons is coming downtown Manhattan at 12 noon? And those of y'all that know about raccoons know how shy a raccoon is? Yeah, I had a raccoon. See, I didn't know nothing about no raccoon. How, how many of y'all know about raccoons? I didn't know nothing about no raccoon until I moved out on this farm. Raccoons, the difference between them and the rest of them, they can use their thumb. Did you know that? 
See, the monkey can't use I believe the monkey can't use his thumb, but they know first time that white boy knew they can use his thumb, they can replace them with us. The monkey, see, make like you ain't got no thumb. You can't grip nothing. See, the monkey's supposed to not be, I know that monkey can use their thumb. A raccoon can use their thumb. A raccoon. I came home one day, you know, and I travel with, with all my stuff and big, a lot of vitamins. I came home, I'm way out on the farm. We don't lock no doors. I left my bags on the porch. You know what I'm saying? Raccoon opened up my bag, ate my vitamins. And then doo dooed in my bag. You know what I did? I fixed the raccoon a meal and laced it with red cayenne pepper. Baby, you heard raccoons howling around. <laughs> if they could have wrote me a letter, they'd say I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, let's watch this on a fast. Forty day fast. First seven days. If you fast now, you got to walk slow. If you fast now. You can't die on a fast. Don't let nobody tell you you're going to die on fast. Don't let nobody, you cannot die on fast. If you get up, you get dizzy. That's because all your blood is being purified. Fasting is nature's operating table. You should take off from work and fast. But you can't. That's why God will knock you down on your back. Then you take off from work. Okay? You know what I'm saying? And I say this again. You know, you and I are lovers, right? It's all dead in the morning. I got the sister covered, baby. That's, you know, I'm weeping it just for a few minutes. Joy do come in the morning, okay? <laughs> Y'all be running that old game down on yourself. My wife told me that. Oh, great. Promise me she was feeling good. Promise me that if I leave you, if I die for you, you die for me, you will never see nobody like that. You better try to get that deal while we're alive. <laughs> Boy, y'all can get silly. I mean, it just comes to time. You know what she told me one time? She said, y'all be buying this burial, this land. So when you die, I told any land, I'll buy, I'll be on now. <laughs> now, uh, a 40-day fast. Watch this now. The first seven days, the body shakes down. Second seven days, the billions of stomach bellies go to sleep. All right? Whole system shuts down. Now, after the 21st day, the body cannibalizes itself. That means what? Start eating itself. You hairdressers, if you, if you ran a comb through my hair real easy, what hair is going to come out? The dead hair, right? All right, so when the body starts cannibalizing itself, it eats up the weak disease tissues first. And what are those? Cancer, AIDS, all right? Eat it up. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Oh, get rid of it. Open. Now, after the 28th day, that's why I made my mistake. The light side and the dark side, the negative and positive electrons go to war. That's the thought pattern. And if you ain't in prayer and meditation, the dark side will win. Have anybody ever read a book by Jonathan Livingston Seagull? That was not about a seagull. Go back and read it again. That was about a human fasting. That's why he started that book off and say, most seagulls uh, uh, live to eat, I eat to live, and he kept getting high and high and high and high. Let me tell you something about fast. If you say you're just going X amount of days, don't go no further. You get locked out there, you get a high, you get locked out there, and we'll never come back. I mean, you be zooming out there. You hear me? Because I'm just, see, that's why nobody want to talk about no fast. There's something nice that comes over. And then now, now don't ask me no question, because people say, well, can you have sex while you're fasting? <laughs> or can you drink a little buttermilk while you're fasting? Next thing you know, you got a seven-course meal on fast. <laughs> no, fast means give it up. You understand? So if your old lady ain't fat, your old man ain't fat, let's suffer. Well, I got, I got to give him a little, because he go see Mary. You don't want him anyway. See, one day we're going to have to stop negotiating with filth. All right. And one day you black folk are going to really have to understand what love is. You go all over the world, people that don't believe in God, people do believe in God, people that don't do this, do that. The one symbol that stays the same, the symbol of love is a heart, not a brain. Love should not be up here, it should be down there. And as long as it's there, you never kill nobody, never be angry with nobody. But we put it up there. And that's the worst place to put it. Y'all scared about anything right now? You scared about anything? A soul spirit, the sister told me one time when the CIA and the FBI was about to kill me, and I went to her and said, what's the best way to get around? She said, son, there's a whole lot of water out there in that ocean, but it can't sink your ship till it gets inside. Don't let it get in there. Keep it out of there. Keep poverty out of there. Keep death out of there. Keep hurt out of there. Keep fear out of there. Fear and God don't occupy the same spot. 
fear for God and poverty you don't exercise and say so if you ain't got no money you something wrong with you and your God sickness and God don't occupy the same spot but God said I gave you that cancer is a gift from God see that diabetes is a gift from God I know that sounds strange but if I had a television camera up here now and I'm watching my money over there and 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 once I see the burglar come up it's going to show up where on the screen right so when you get a headache, that's something malfunction showing up on the screen. Now, ain't nobody never died from cancer. That sounds crazy, don't it? Anybody never died from cancer, I'd be high blood pressure. Look, if, if we all know this brother here, and we know he's honest ever, and he say to us, if you're in this room at 6 o'clock today, he's going to be blowed up. And at 7 o'clock, we're here and it blow up, right? We didn't die from the explosion. We died from ignoring what? His warning. Okay, now did y'all hear that? Because it's very important. Cancer is God's warning. And when you die from cancer, you didn't die from cancer, you died from ignoring. That's why a doctor will not tell you you have cancer then you die today. Okay? You follow that? Because I'm going to make it real simple for you. Real simple. Anything I get, I get from what I eat or drink. Okay? So if the doctor tells me I got cancer, how do I get it? So if I stop eating, what? Cancel me. <laughs> That's what it says to the Bible. If I got high blood pressure, if I stop eating, high blood pressure go away. And the fact that I died from high blood pressure, I died from ignorance God's warning. When I wake up tomorrow morning and God got a pain in my chest, God is saying, rest with me today, my son, and I will heal you. Don't say, go up, go to the doctor, and get shot in your butt so you can go to work. When you wake up and your ankles are swollen up so much you can't get your shoes on. As God said, rest with me today, mother. The body's malfunctioning. I'm trying to warn you. You're violating me. Sit with me. And so after you get on that 28th day of fast, the light side and the dark side go at one another. Did y'all see the movie Star Wars? Wasn't it about the light side and the dark? All it was about was the fast and what happened to the human body. And after 40 days, you can just about shook everything but arthritis. Then you come off and you can always tell. Can y'all see my tongue? What color is it? See any white on it all? <laughs> Anytime you fast, turn tongue white. Y'all fast every night when you go to bed and go to sleep. You wake up in the morning, eat your first meal, it's called break fast. We saw breakfast, don't even know what we're saying. If you wake up in the morning and don't eat the first meal, you don't break the fast. And whenever you start a fast, start in the evening, sundown. You go one day, start like you started today. Don't start at midnight, because that puts some pressure on you. That means if you start at midnight, you got to go to midnight tomorrow. You start today, this time tomorrow, you'll be already eating again. It's that simple. And put olive oil on the body. Walk slow, don't carry nothing heavy, because you mess up your muscles. And it goes that way. You got some money problems, you got some financial problems, you got some debt problems, you got some land problems, whatever, fast. But when you fast, don't send no negative energy out there because you kill something you got to pay for. That's how powerful fast is. You have a laser that will kill something that you don't have to pay for. And so I leave you now and I, I drop this on you. Water, you're going to lose 12 pounds, 12 pounds a day, 12 pounds a week. You fast now. Fast and lose impurity. Fasting is not to lose weight, you lose impurity. It's been the process of losing impurity you lose weight. And then when you come off of a fast, woo, you gain weight quick. Why? If I carried my, my car to this brother here and he totally overhauled my engine, I used less gas now than I did before, right? So once you come off the fast, cut back on your food. Once you stop smoking cigarettes, once you stop doing all this, I can get people to stop smoking cigarettes overnight. All I do is come up with a trick report. You know how white folks do when they be lying? They come, they, you saw the sheriff talking about Jackson Fox. Michael, <clears throat> they always do that. <clears throat> they talk out their throat. We here at Harvard University and Yale University, University of Colorado, I got to throw a black one in, and Harvard University in Morehouse. <clears throat> after 35 years of research, we found out that due to the acid rain mixed with the moon dust, anybody that smokes after this coming September 21st will turn jet black. <laughs> well, we don't have to worry about white folks. And most black folks will stop smoking, right? And back in people say, people make some dumb things. I don't understand how come them white folks don't like us. They always laying out there trying to get a fan. Baby, you're right. They're trying to get a suntan, not a sun black. That is suntan lotion, not sun black lotion. Somewhere 
you can be in control of your life. And just because you're 90 pounds, don't think you don't need to fast. Just breathing. To be in Atlanta, if you didn't do nothing but sit in your hotel all day today and didn't eat nothing, you breathe in equivalent to three packs of cigarettes a day. That's how filthy the air is. And you got to clean it up. That's why fasting one day a week helps clean out the system. And then spend you some time and take you long. Y'all want to have some fun? Go on a watermelon and fast. Just don't eat number of watermelon for the next two or three weeks. If you talk about clean out your body, and you know you're going to get full because, you know, you need enough watermelon in your belly. That's the worst ache in the world. You eat that watermelon and look like something happened. That thing just gets high. And then, but ain't it nice when you eat that watermelon? You yellow, no, no, no. You eat so much watermelon and you just got to belt or for it or look like you're going to bust. You know what that And you can't do neither one of them. You just sit there and say, uh. And then all at once, God comes to the rescue. You hit that belt in for it at the same time. Yeah. And it looks like all that stuff just flies around, and boy, you feel good, and you, boy, you want to go eat nothing all year. And once that belt and fart moves that stuff around, you right back there trying to get you a bologna and cheese. And then try to eat, after you come off that fruit, eat fruit. Young, there's no age. How can the Bible tell y'all about eternal life, and it don't mean eternal life? It doesn't mean we're doing something wrong. So eight glasses of water a day, fruit in the morning, fruit for lunch, and now let me just tell you what I left off last night because I didn't want to get involved. There's about $800 worth of vitamins here. Now you don't have to buy them, but let me tell you what it is. You have beauty, beauty salon? Mm -hmm. What's the cheapest thing I can bring my old lady in and get? Netflix. And how much that cost? Netflix. And what's the most expensive thing in the whole shop? Mm -hmm. And what's that cost? Mm -hmm. Three fifty. Okay, now the reason I said that is this. But you have to have some little things in between to be competitive, right? Because you just can't open up a shop and do nothing but the weeds. I mean, some people can, but there's a lot of people that get that in between. Well, my Dick Gregory Bahamian died to put the right can out would have cost about $900 because mine is the Rolls Royce, but I wouldn't have been competitive. Y'all follow that? So what I did, I put it out enough to stay competitive, but mine still costs more than that. You know something about mine? Maybe mine's the only one selling health food stores. Mine clean. Mine don't get you sick. Mine don't get you sick. Now, that can cost me two dollars and fifty cents. They all pay what nineteen some twenty dollars for, right? They cost me two fifty to make. I sell it in for ten. Now, I could make that can for eighty five cents, but I decided I would take advantage of y'all. So I put a lot of stuff in it that deals with high blood pressure, sugar diabetes, arthritis, a whole lot of stuff I put in there. That as long as I don't mention it, I don't violate the government. Now, I had to leave some stuff out. So this is the real Rolls Royce. So those of you, now it says on here how to take it every day. How many to take? Yeah, it's about 60 pills. Say, woo. I used to smoke four packs of cigarettes. Nobody ever said, woo. <laughs> when I was smoking four packs of cigarettes a day, drinking triple scotch, nobody worried about my health. Men I thought fast, people said, you all right? I said, no, I was, I was in trouble when I was drinking and smoking. I'm all right now. Yeah, be careful. We, we, we need you. They didn't say that when I was smoking and drinking. Driving down the highway, half drunk. You know, we all do that. Think you can drive better. You know what I'm talking about. Think you can drive. I don't know. God sure was blessing me back then. And finally, water. How many glasses? Eight. Eight. Now, listen to this. For every 25 pounds you're overweight, you have to add another glass. If you're 50 pounds overweight, you two glasses. If you're 100 pounds overweight, four glasses, up and up. Because water is a diuretic. Girl, I can't drink no water. No, my body holds water. Holds water because you know, you know you're dumb enough not to put enough water in your body so it holds what it got when it got it when you can get it. And any time you go pee, other than when you're taking vitamins and your pee is any color other than natural, that's God saying you don't have enough water. And the real bum, they spent two billion dollars trying to find out Alzheimer's disease is really called some lack of drinking water. Now, I'm gonna say this and we, listen. We got a car, stand up for I want you to come around. Come, come down here. This is an automobile. Automobile. The eyes would be what? The nose would be the exhaust. Breathing. Mouth would be where you put what in? Gas, right? Rectum would be what? Exhaust. Get down on all four, that's the wheels. Do you know what I'm saying? Now, what's the only thing he has inside of him that a car has inside of him? There's a battery, and in that battery, there's a thing called what? Cells. Cells. You got cells inside of you, right? Now, that battery is a little bitty thing, right? 
You got a brand new engine, brand new Rolls Royce, but in order to make that battery work, you have to keep what in it? And once that water gets below a certain section, that battery will do what? And close the whole car down. Thank you. Now, did, did y'all hear that? Once the battery gets below a certain point in water and those cells get deprived, it will shut the whole car down. Don't care how much gas you got, follow me? All right? Don't care how much good your engine is, okay? Our body is the same way. And so we talk about eight glasses a day, but you got to also drink a little bit more than that to make up for the dehydration. And we got to raise those cells up. And so on this list, and I just put them in a, a chair over here. And who counts good? Count. Give me a count. Come on. Look at Real quick. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Pick up that and just sit down here. here. We're going to do this real quick. Just give you something to remember. <laughs> Sound like you just came off full job. <laughs> okay, right one right there. Okay, here we go. We're moving fast now. One, just one. Wait, real big so they can see it. One. One. Okay. Now, the stand on side so they can see. That one. Now let's say that one is gonna represent health. Y'all got that? What one represent? Okay, put a zero in front of it, baby. Now, one and zero, that's ten, is what? That's one and zero is ten, right? Now that zero represents uh, family. Okay, so one represents what? Yeah. Ten represents what? Yeah. Put another zero there, baby. Okay, that's a hundred, right? Yeah. Uh, that represents uh, finances. You got that? Yeah. Your money, your finance, your job. So one represents what? Yeah. Ten represents what? Yeah. Hundred represents what? Yeah. Put another zero there, baby. Now that's not, what is that now? Yeah. Thousand. That represents, uh, what's the word? That would be one second. Reputation. You got that? All right, now. One is what? Ten. Ten. Hundred. Thousand. All right, thank you, dear. Thank you. you all hear that? Give it to me again. Ten. Take that away, and what you got? Hear me now. Hear me now. Once you take the one away, there is no thousand, there is no ten, there is no hundred. One is help. You can stay in them shops all night if you want to. You can load up your bank account if you want to. And once you affect this, family's over. Finance is over. And reputation is over. Hear me good now. One, get out there and get you some physical fitness. Drink your water. Eat your fruit. The number one thing you got. Keep all day in the morning. Shop ain't going to close. Yeah, that's a game y'all be playing. <laughs> oh, yeah, your children will come like a fool in the morning. But they be going to that game this Sunday. They be right back at the movie. And them little children, when they come home from the funeral, they're going to be playing with them toys. You <laughs> that? And so what I'm saying is, it's up to you. And so what we're going to do, sit here. So we're going to sit here. This is my daughter, six years old. There's a thing back here that tell her right and wrong, okay? So when she see me smoking a cigarette, she see what? But, but no, no, what, what, what she knows cigarettes to do what? So little babies don't have unique abilities to see this. So when she see, and she know cancer will do what? So when she see me with a cigarette, she see what? Okay, thanks, dear. Now, it is hard for me to smoke in front of a child and do something that disrespect for me and that real thing can ever have respect for me. So y'all walking around talking about respect your mother. What are you talking about? The Bible says, what? Honor what? That's bullshit. Honor your mother and father if they honorable. Suppose I see my daddy, listen to me, suppose my daddy chop up 12 five-year-old children with an axe. I'm supposed to honor him? So then what, what is, so, so who put that in there? Honor thy mother? No. Hitler's children should honor him? Huh? Come on now. I'm going to make you a whore and a dope pusher. All right? I mean the most miserable whore, dope pusher, murderer. Right? Uh, look at your daughter here. Uh, would you lead her into prostitution? Would you lead her into dope? Then if you a whore and a dope pusher and wouldn't lead your daughter in prostitution, why in the Lord's Prayer do I say, lead me not into temptation? What's wrong with that? What God going to lead you? 
that's why y'all y'all better listen. Because people tamper with stuff, and long as they put it under the auspices of something, y'all run to it and don't check it. But I tell you something, you're going to check it. What God would lead you in a temptation? Lead me from temptation? Is that it? Or did somebody switch that? Okay? Can I put a car in a big truck, or can I put a big truck in a car? Y'all know that, right? Well, how can y'all be so, so bright when I ask you something and so dumb when you read it somewhere else? You can put a car in a big truck, right? Well, can I put a mansion in a house or a house in a mansion? Whoa! You can put a house in a mansion. But yet when you get the Bible and say, in my house there's many mansions, and y'all don't challenge that? In my house? Didn't say one mansion. Or are they talking about astrology? Or are they talking about the 12 houses? Huh? In my house, there's many mansions. And all I'm saying is, you got to just stop and listen, even if you don't say nothing to nobody. Just stop and say, wait a minute. See, I always had trouble with everybody telling me how God wanted me to love one another, and if you misuse me, I'm not supposed to hate you. You kill my mother, I'm not supposed to hate you. Then tell me he can burn me. I want to be like God, right? So if God can burn me for being wrong, how come I can't burn you? <laughs> you see the fallacies of you telling me to be lovable and kind, but you the boss and you not lovable and kind? Or did someone tamper with something? Okay? So you see how we get in this bind as black folks? from a simple craziness of simple crazy. I spoke with me this morning. Y'all get the paper this morning? <laughs> if y'all wasn't here yesterday, this don't mean nothing to you. What's the, what's the, what's the date on the paper there, baby? That third, come on, come on, sit down, give me some eyes. <laughs> What's the day? Thursday. Third. Oh, Tuesday, August 7th. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, you have a shop. I hope you don't get in this early. Because <laughs> you beat and you beat and bleached it out. All right, now, over here, there's some question and answers. What's that say? The Jordan case. Two young suspects are ordered held without bail in the shooting death of Michael Jordan's father. Question and answer. Why was one suspect called Mr. Okay, thank you. See that? See that? So that was in yesterday's paper. But then I'm going to show you something later. All right. Okay. Very interesting. We'll get both papers and look at them. Now, out of love for a white man shot his wife in Boston. He said a black man did this. She died, the baby died. Yeah. Charles Stewart. But we didn't know until 18 months later. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the way my racism works. I didn't challenge it because it sounded like something they could do. Is that scary? I didn't challenge it. No, wait, no, no, wait, no, no, no. I know everybody gets bright in my audience, but I'm saying I didn't challenge it. All right? Because it sounded like something they could do. See? You, should, you see how racism works? Just like we did yesterday, a little black child come up here, pull out a beeper, we think of drugs, white boy come up here, pull out a beeper, think of Duke Yowser. Okay? Frankenstein, Dracula, Wolfman, King Kong. King Kong, y'all see King Kong? King Kong is a story of a nigga raping a white woman. They just do it in 
and symbols. You know, nigga, big old. Ain't it funny? Every time you read in the paper about a crime and they say burly, they're not talking about white. All right? Okay? Burly? Okay? They're talking about black. All right? So this whole King Kong thing was supposed to be this big nigga raping this white woman. That's what the whole thing is. And white boys go and look at it with their old lady and get off. Because it's the whole sex thing. Dracula, do you know anybody ever in the history of the planet can turn into a bat <laughs> and suck your blood? You know where that came from? Out of Nazi Germany. And it was them dirty Germans talking about Jews sucking money out of a bank. That's why you got to be careful what you look at. And that's why them good old sanctified folks, they just, with all of their craziness, they say, you can't go to movies. And they write. They don't know why. Ain't that lovely? <laughs> we talked about where lipstick came from yesterday, right? Did them sanctified folks say you can't wear it? They don't know why. See how? See how it works? See how it works? Can't wear pants? Why? Because your vagina breathes just like your mouth because new life got to come through it. And when you wear pants, you shut the oxygen off and you create fungus. That's why you women today are spending $6.5 billion going to doctors getting shots for them vaginal infections. But they didn't know that. They just knew that. They didn't know why. You know, they just something just... Did y'all see uh, Batman? That's a Jewish thing. The last one, the last one just came out. The last. Okay, you see it? Who saw it? All right, do you remember uh, Batman took off? He didn't say Batman all the time, right? Cat lady, did she say cat lady all the time? Did she take that stuff off? But what about the penguin? Did he look like a Jew? Did he say, did he say a Jew all the time? And it starts off, his mother threw him where? Now, come on now, worse than that. Sewer system, all right? What do you find in sewers that you don't find in rivers? Rats. See, see what they do? Okay. See how it works? You Jew me out of my money. You ever heard that expression? That's about a Jew. You know that? <laughs> you dip me out of my shop. That's the negative thing about gypsies. You welched on the deal. There's a group of people who's called Welch. See how they do it? <laughs> and they just drop it out there. And we don't know it. And it gets into our subconscious mind. Okay? And so, out of love for my children, I heard my wife doing the Atlanta murders saying to my son, if you see any white man, and you're right, it was white folks, that little old wimpy chump didn't do that. You see any white man stop you, run. I said, no, go thank God. No, I said, I'd rather see these niggas dead than scared. Suppose this lady here is not white. You know, we got some sisters look whiter than white. She might be, I don't know. But suppose that's your daughter. And you come into my house, send her to my house to bring me a $30,000 check that you owe me. And she blow the horn for my son, and he break and run. See what she do? <laughs> or she pass out from a heart attack and fall over the horn and break. See what she do? No, no, no. She dead. Not scared. Cause it don't work. Got my gun under my pillow cause I'm scared. My lady get up to go pee in the middle of the morning. I don't know if she's up. I hear some noise. <laughs> Blow away. So, out of love for mother, and we teach black men that craziness, not women. Now watch this. This is my son. I'm mom. This old nasty white filling station, you know, guy got the old filling station, evil, nasty white guy. He never liked niggas. So I say to this crazy boy of mine, you know, who always get in trouble. Now, when you go down there uh, to get my cigarettes, you know, Mr. Wallace is crazy. So don't pay no attention to him. You know how we do that? 
the black brother is just as crazy, but we don't. So consequently in life, when we run across white folks that get nasty, we can always apologize and move. Stand up here, baby. White boy stepped on my foot. Come up here, white boy. You say something nasty to my woman, and I'll go hold my arm. I'll, I'll kill you. And she pulled me away. Okay? Black brother say something to me. She stick me on me and you both cut him. Thanks. <laughs> okay? Now, this is beginning to change with young folks. But that thing is still there. It's still there. So black men end up evil at a system, putting a bad vibration, uh, vibe through my body. Give me a chance for a minute. Put your finger on your face and smile. Now drop your smile. Now smile again. Do you feel something move? Y'all feel that? All right, laugh. <laughs> Thank you. Now, let me tell you what happened. When you laugh, some muscles move, right? Those muscles pinch a nerve. That nerve will drop an oil in your body that will get rid of sickness. Now you know why they say laughter is the best medicine. See what they say? All right. Now when you frown or tighten up, you pinch another nerve which will drop gas into your system and start destroying cells in your body. That's why you can trace arthritis, rheumatism, most of that stuff back to evilness and meanness. My woman, I leave her, she said, I won't hate him, but son, he hurt me. Well, you're going to die. Because hurtfulness is the flip side of hatefulness. Hurtfulness is the flip side of hatefulness. Okay? It will destroy you, and a vibration comes off you, and everything you cook, you poison, and everybody eats you. When my mother come home, man, I didn't want nothing she had to cook. Tired. I heard her one day. Oh, she beat the hell out of me. I heard her one day cooking. Mad, been in white folk kitchen all day, talking about, I'm dead tired. I, I kept me some money. I spent it all. I went on a Chinese restaurant and got me some chili. <laughs> See, how come you didn't eat? I don't want no food for somebody. I'm talking about, they dead and they tired. I don't want nobody cooking for me that's tired. I don't want nobody cooking for me that's dead. When you put both of them together, it got to be a messed up vibration in my food. I am dead tired. Gee, you know what I'm saying? So, if, if I got an unconscious resentment for a white racist system, so let's say I resent all y'all. And three days ago, I knew y'all was coming. I put some harsh manure in my pocket. That represents hate to throw on you, okay? Listen to me good. Whose pocket stunk for three days? Yours or mine? Y'all follow this? When I ate dinner with my wife and family last night, whose wife and family smelled this? Yours or mine? How long I had it in my pocket? If I throw it on you, how long are you going to leave it on you? So then the hate I have for you is with me longer than with you, right? Now, if harsh manure in my pocket to throw on you makes my pocket stink, think about hatred and resentment in your brain, what do it do to your mind? And if I got a choice between a stinky pocket or a stinky mind, I take a stinky pocket and I throw the cold away. And that relationship spills over on everything you got on your children. Y'all been around evil folks, children evil. Walk around jaws all tight. <laughs> See somebody smile and they've been evil so long, you say, something must have happened. <laughs> okay? And the thing is, is the system that messes up so bad, instead of calling it crazy, we say he cool. Nigga be walking like this here. They ain't Bill cool. Nigga ain't cool, he crazy. If you think that nigga cool, you leave the country with him see if he can get through customs walking like that. Now, so when my mother teach me to go murder you, there's something in the back of my head, even though mother said it, even I'm little, I know it ain't right. You know, I might do it. You follow me? But some, I know it ain't right. Because even when I murder you, I run, I hide, and I, I be discreet, right? All right? So I know it's not right. 
So if I know murdering you is not right because something back here tells me, because there's a consciousness. I all got y'all in my car now. Y'all was all asleep when you wake up doing 100 miles an hour. Yeah, I don't even have to tell y'all speeding. You got something in your body that let you know I'm going fast, right? Sure. I got the air conditioning on in the car and it's cold and I tell y'all I got the heat on. I can't lie to you because something in your body tells you that's air, right? So your brain works the same way. So when your mother tells you this stuff, something tells you in the subconscious that's wrong. So this book I told y'all about, Richard Major, The Cool Pole, in that book this scientist did the research and it found out that this thing in the back of black men, I'm sure women too, but he did it on men, in the back of black men's head, tell them your mom and daddy done double-crossed you. They lie, they nasty, they take crap off of a system that they wouldn't take off of you. Okay? I, as a black man, will go all over the world to fight for America, but when America slap my old lady, I don't fight. I'm a killer. Go all over the world killing folks. Okay? So, what they found out now is these black men, sure black women do the same thing. But the research, and when you get the book, is about men. So they found out that these black men, all at once, have now started doing little things that say, I'm in charge. All right? So, something tells me that this white racist system, because y'all let it, won't give me a back lo bank loan even after I get a doctor's degree. All right? When I come here to Atlanta to get the job, I won't get it because I'm black, right? Now let me show you how that works. The highest suicide rate in America among adults is black folks. Did that shock you? Yeah, okay. You didn't know that, did you? How many niggas you know ever had claps or sisters? Huh? You know any? See, certain things we get we don't talk about. Now you think because you never heard of a black person with sisters or claps, we don't get it? So things like suicide that shames us, we don't talk about. Are you ready for this? 93% of all black suicides went to white colleges. Harvard is preparing her for life, but they didn't give her one course in how to deal in this blackness, 103. Okay? And if she get out, she can't handle it. I go to a white college, y'all in a white college, I'm a white professor. When I put my foot up here, do y'all think any of y'all sitting out there remind me of my sister's child? Do you know how many of y'all look like my family? You understand what I'm saying? See how it works? And I understand she might not be able to express herself writing, but as a black man, been in the black experience, I can listen to her and know she's brilliant. Okay? She might not be able to translate it on paper because her writing skills might not be, you understand? Know but I can listen to her because I got a brilliant son that's the same way. I got a daughter, I swear to you, I thought she was stupid. Okay? My son, we sent him to high school, $25,000. Both of them go to Howard University. She wipes him out. He get a three point eight. she gets a four point. I thought she was stupid because she never talked much. You asked the question? She said, yeah. Nope. So what are you going to major in? Communication. <laughs> and so I have violated now watch this here's what this book will tell you so remember think how hip God is if this room is hot and you got a, your book in your hand what you gonna do I'm gonna do it let me see stand up here stand up here Nobody has to tell you, right? There's a, it's a God intelligence to tell you the plan, right? All right? Now, is that normal? Okay, thanks. Now, as normal as it heard the fan in a hot room because something told her it was the body hot, right? So these black men is being told that we as parents then dogged them out and haven't worked to change nothing so they know there's a lot of stuff they won't able to get. But when I walk like this here, ain't nothing the system can tell me to do this. So when you see these black men doing this, all they're saying is, I'm in charge. And that's as normal as her family. All right? That's as normal as her family. All right? Now, there's a funny thing, and you barbers, you don't know this here. These black men are all getting... One, two, three, check. Check, check, one, two. There was no third grade dropout that would get their hair like that. Think about that. Okay? 
I mean, they were getting the Jerry Curls, but the brothers who were going to college that would never think about a Jerry Curl, right? Or conking their hair, right? Would come back and look like they got a haircut and worms that took a razor and went through it, cut all kind of funny stuff in it. Because they love Mary. <laughs> okay, what was they saying? They saying, I'm in charge. And uh, you all left me in a white racist system, but there's certain things that I can do to keep the back. The way I talk. Yeah, what it is. Yeah, hey, man, me and you. Okay? And even when they go to college, they straight up, they talk like, why? Because I'm in charge. And so all of these little funny things is us screaming out. Screaming out. So when we get back to the bottom, bottom, bottom of it, you check the tape off for a minute, will you? Check the tape off, because I don't want nobody to hear it but y'all. We turn it right back on. And look. Okay? Because you see something. Y'all can listen in them shops to the level of what them brothers and sisters is talking about and know what's going to happen. Know how angry they are. Y'all can listen to the conversation. And sometimes y'all need to shut up and just listen because some people's coming in with a message. You got 35 people coming in. All of them got 35 different like You just got one. So they're going to tell you about how bad the old man is. You're going to be too good with my old man. Shut up and listen. Because if you listen right, you hear things. That's why Al Capone was alive when he came here from New York to kill him, the shoeshine boy. And Gary, shine shoes, so them thugs came up there and got a shoeshine and started talking about what they were going to do to Al Capone in front of his brother. He just kept shining shoes. Then he called him, Mr. Capone, got something to tell you. And so, 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 so what I'm saying is that when you watch what this system, so, what was the brother's name that shot his wife that was pregnant? Charles Stewart. And I thought he did it. Right? Sound like something a nigga do. But ten days later, I had to speak before the New England editors, the most powerful group of white folks you ever see. Ten days. Stewart was still in jail, in the hospital. His wife had been buried. He couldn't even go to the funeral. I walked out on the stage and said, Then why that a shame on y'all? Shame on you. They didn't know what I said. I said, there's, there's a, a Mr. Stewart, Jeff Ben Barry. Y'all ain't doing something right. Y'all ain't telling all the story. My folks get mad because they're, they're already mad that the nigga done did this. So I said, oh, wait, before we do this, let me tell you something. Let me tell you that I have the same white racist mentality. And understand, a white racist system and white racist people are two different things. Ain't a white person on this planet that each one of us in this room ain't different enough to make them like us. But a white racist system have no mother, no daddy, no God, no integrity. They will kill white folks on the way to get you. All right? And we dealing with white racist system. All right? Because that white racist system is me. Me. All right? It's me. White racist system. And so... I said to them, not only do I have a white racist system, I have a sexist mentality. And it's my sexist mentality that say, y'all, editors, ain't doing this story right. Because as a sexist mentality, I know that if you and your man walking down the street, and you and your woman walking down the street, and I'm going to commit a crime, I shoot the man first. Why? Because I think he's the most hostile and the most aggressive, although she might be black belt karate and he a sissy. And you don't know the difference between a sissy and a gay. See, sissy is what old, what old days, if you was a sissy, he couldn't fight, couldn't play basketball. You was a sissy. Okay? See what I'm saying? Now, but my racism still told me the nigga did it. I just thought it was a love affair. Okay? I thought he was having an affair with her. Because under no circumstances will there be a robbery and you shoot the woman first. Okay? Now that's how I figured it out. And then I laid the bomb on them. I'm going to say I know some of y'all in here also know that that bloodstream of the wife and the child, Mrs. Stewart, had cocaine in it. How come y'all ain't printed that if it was Jesse Jackson's wife? I know you would. And two people got ready to get up, and one white guy stood and said, Oh, you're right, Mr. Gregory. 
I got that report and I refused to print it. Okay? And 18 months later, after they whooped brothers, I mean, they just came in black neighborhood and just, any of y'all knew only, knew only, you remember that, that incident? Y'all was a little young then, huh? No, 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 no. When they went and shot that pregnant woman in the bathtub. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Over in Algiers. Okay. I went in, I went in and investigated that with Mark Lane, found out this white cop was, was, was seven miles off his beat. Seven miles. So, you know, he used to be way over on the tip. In the park. We interviewed a black dude that was jogging through the park and mm -hmm. saw a white cop get killed by two white men. You know how scared it is? I bet that nigga ain't ran. No more in life. <laughs> we went to interview him. Here. <laughs> Here's what he said. The white cop is sitting in the car on the driver's side. Mm -hmm. Two white men pull up in the car. One get out, go over. He gives them something. They give him something, and he smells it. That's where you test cocaine. Right? Evidently, an argument started. The white boy on the other side came around and shot him dead through the head. They blamed it on a black, and they killed four black folks that night, including a pregnant black woman sitting in the bathtub, begging them, don't kill me. <laughs> Double barrel shotgun shot him through the belt. Black man is mad. A white racist cop, you know who was the police chief then? The same police chief that was the police chief that came into Birmingham after Bull Connor. That's who he hired. Judge Merrill, friend of mine. Because y'all kind of weird. And do you know no man in, in, in New Orleans as dark as you could ever be, man, because niggas wouldn't vote for him? Thank you very much. I was shocked that Andy Young made it because I thought Andy was too dark to be elected here. See, Nick's got some funny stuff we got to flush out one day, and one day we're going to have to deal with that. Sure black folk be running around talking about that thing. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Whole lot of black folk wouldn't vote for somebody as black as me. Okay. Oh, right. Hmm. Okay. And y'all got a white, y'all got a nigga in New Orleans not as mad that's whiter than the one y'all had before. Okay. So I go in and I see Dutch. Me and Dutch was real good friends. That's what the evil boy you talk about that Dutch evil. Wrong. I said to Dutch, you care? I said to Dutch, I said Dutch, I, you know me and your friends. I don't want to get into your business, but uh, I thought Dutch pulled his pants down when they argued with his sister and told her to kiss his butt. <laughs> the mayor, that's really evil. Called. Ooh, that what nigga, nigga pulled his pants down and he didn't kiss me. And I was standing there. I didn't know what it was. I was with her, but I was coming to see him. Oh, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dutch, you got a ring or something I can kiss? You know? <laughs> oh, she cussed Dutch out, baby. She cussed, she cussed Dutch out. <laughs> Dutch Maria was a judge. <clears throat> and then he came mayor. So there was a judge seat open and unbeknown to anybody. They always said that was the black judge. So I came in to a friend of mine. Jim Garrison, the one they made the Kennedy movie off of. Mm -hmm. And I said, Jim, I'd like to campaign for you. He said, you can't. He said, this seat is for the black judge. I said, I have one rule. Said, I'm not one of these niggas that talk about, I think you got the right to, if you qualify, I think you got to be right just because you black. See, white folks don't use that as a criteria. See, y'all be talking all that. I don't mind saying that in front of white folks, but when we get down, y'all be serious about it. Yeah, put him in to be qualified. No, are you serious? I think this cracker need a gorilla to be president. I, I could shave a gorilla and put a suit on him and unleash them on him. But y'all always gonna sit some old kind of stand because y'all crazy. And I don't say that facetiously. I say that so you can go get some help. You're crazy. Anytime y'all let a black boy, a girl that come out your belly, stand in your neighborhood and sell dope to your damn grandchildren. Nigga, who are you? These ain't Italians, these ain't somebody from Mars. These, these ain't even niggas from another town. They're your children. And you so slimy and nasty, you won't even tell them to go sell it to Italian children because you know they'll blow them niggas away. Mother, father, 
You know, sitting on a corner laughing about the lifestyle. Lifestyle? Well, what would you tell them? A white newspaper before asked me, would you tell them to go to McDonald's and, and work for a minute? No, I'd tell them to go to McDonald's and ask when the last time a McDonald's worker been murdered. You don't see what happened. They come in the house. He the dope push. They come in the house and kill everybody in the house. Babies, grandmothers, whole thing. Good, good. Y'all kill my children. And y'all sit there and let these little trifling niggas do all that. So now you're done. That's what we, that's what we tolerate. And somewhere, 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 we have to say, well, wait a minute. And, and, and listen to what I'm saying. The Italian mafia that bring it in don't stand on the corner and sell it to their children. They don't stand in front of Catholic churches. Why is it the only neighborhood in the world? Did you know all over the world they have a red light district? Did y'all know that? And that means the red light district, you know you can go hustle the hustle. Except America. Black prostitutes walk right down where I live, and when this white boy come in to get a prostitute, he can't tell the difference between a prostitute and my daughter, or a prostitute and my grandmother. He'll blow his horn at an eight-year-old girl walking down the street. Why do y'all let that happen? And as long as you let it happen, white people can't have no respect for you. They go to a white neighborhood and see if you see them hoes standing on the corner in a residential neighborhood. We ain't saying prostitutes, can't say, who's here? Anybody here from St. Man, we went in there and ran them hoes off the corner. And I was, I told her, I said, look, sister, I ain't after y'all. White folks have made me mad in the time. I'm trying to send a message to them. Well, nigga, you ain't going out there, baby. You look, there's some folks that you can mess with, and there's some folks you can't. I'm one that you can't mess with, because white folks know I don't play with them. Nigga, we ain't going out. Baby, please, please, don't do this to me. I'm not after you. I will close this town down. I mean, you really don't understand who I am. <laughs> she went out and got a pistol. She got a pistol. Old evil nigga that I love fell in love with me. Because I walked up to the porch while they was on the ground. I, this nigga crazy. I, can't, I got my car. It's crazy. Then she left. Next two months, 11 prostitutes was murdered. I come back to town, get on TV, and said, I can't believe I come in here to run prostitutes off a certain area, and 11 of them are dead, and ain't no cop came and talked to me about it. I believe if these were white prostitutes that I intimidated, y'all would ask me, so y'all must know who's doing it, and it better stop it. Another one ain't been murdered since. That's how it works. Because if you all prostitution, y'all make me mad. Because I'm degraded, I will turn y'all into internal revenue. What will internal revenue do? Internal revenue will send an investigation in there, not that they care, but they don't want me messing with them. They'll send an investigation in there, and they get up in a tree a block away, and they see how many tricks that you will turn today, and then they'll look at your jail record. If you've been jailed 10 years back, they will multiply 10 years times 365 days, and that's how many tricks you owe them for. So then I'll get on TV then and say, now that they give you a tax bill, because you're not taxed by if your profession right or wrong, you tax by the money. And now that they give you the tax bill, that qualifies you for write-offs, right? So now any cop or any politician, you can pay it off, you have a right to write that off. And the minute I tell them that, boy, whew, they get scared, and that's why they wipe them out. Because they know I'll take it to another level. All right? I do not play with this system at all. And Lord, after I found out that I created a thing in my body that they can't kill me, I really dog them. And so, and, and so consequently, what I'm saying is where, where, where do we get an integrity inside to stop things? You remember the old folks? They did not know that secondary smoke caused cancer. So that means y'all sitting in shops and people smoke, y'all gonna get cancer. Okay? So that means secondary smoke caused cancer. Them old folks didn't know that, but they never smoked in the house. Back in the day when women smoked, old men would always go take a walk and smoke. Never drink in front of the children, would always go out and take a little nip. And so when you start understanding the whole God relationship, 
It's my woman here. I go upside her head anytime I get ready. We get in a big argument. I leave. This is my partner here. I call you, say, meet me where? Where you going, my lady? He thought, this man, Trump, woman, man. I got to get out the house. Where we going to meet? At the bar. And when we get to the bar, we're going to drink, and you're going to help me talk about it, right? Now, you want to break up violent relationships? Put a porch on the house. Now, that seems crazy, right? Put a porch. Because back in the old days, when we lived in houses with porches, what was on the porch? Wow! This is a brother here, anyway. Swing! All right? Now, stand up. Come here, pregnant lady. Come here, come on, come on, real quick, real quick. When she walked across the, what's in her belly? But what's in that, what's, what's the baby floating in? So every time she walks, the baby gets that ride, right? That's what a swing is for, thank you. That's what a swing is for, to create that same atmosphere. Same atmosphere. That's all them rides and six flags. They make a billion dollar hustle with them six flags because I'm trying to create that same ride I got when I was in her belly. That's what a rocking chair is about. That's why you take a baby in a rocking chair and you create that same motion the baby felt when he was in the belly. But the difference is that when you do it, you should wrap the baby up in something warm because that water was warm. And once you wrap them up in something warm, and remember the old ladies put the blanket around the baby and sit, they look at how hot it was. They put the baby around the baby and the baby goes to sleep. So when, 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 when my old lady make me mad, instead of calling him, I go on the porch, right? Sit in the swing, right? And then she say, leave Papa alone. And as long as I'm swinging, he said, he'll be all right, right? And as I do it, I start cooling down. Now, plus, he ain't there helping me bad my her, right? Ain't nobody there but her friends. See what is it? Well, when that chump gets mad and he can get around his friend, he's going to come back double mad. And we sit there. See, see, you hear what I'm saying, how nature works? Just that little simple thing of that motion, of that motion. And then all once he cools off. Y'all know this system that made black men so evil. And I come back home with him and you cook this one pie that I was mad about that you didn't cook. Told me, nigga, you eat too much sweets and I really go off. You know, and the reason she said that because this woman I've been with, she can sense it. So y'all can sense every time somebody, you're not spiritual enough to bring it down, but something. I ain't talking about the, the obvious stuff. I'm talking about the discreet stuff. You know, you went to get a loaf of bread and stayed a little too long. you scared to ask him about it because you know he'll jam you. So he'd be doing a little wrong too. So we kind of, so then you cook this big old apple cobbler. And he out there eating, he can hear his lips moving. And, so good. and you say, Ralph, how you like it? And he said, I'm eating it, Ava. <laughs> and, and that was infectious. I'm eating it, Ava. Okay? That whole piece of where do we go? And black women, you fixing to go through some changes now, but it's your turn because now they're fixing to divide us, not they, I mean us, because all at once now we're going to start talking about you the way white folks talked about us in the 60s. So yes, giving them niggas them jobs, they ain't even qualified. We're going to start saying that white folks are giving y'all positions because y'all ain't qualified, y'all are qualified. And it is your turn now. Don't let none of that stuff bother you. Black men, now you got two doctor's degrees, you make more money than me, and these niggas got a headache. So I pray for them old lady can make more money than me. But this is but that's because of white racist system I call manhood. My woman can't make more money than what's that about? What's that about? Ask a nigga what do you do if you hit the lottery? Would you get a headache then? And so when we sit now, now y'all pay attention because I'm gonna carry y'all some places now that's gonna get serious and scary. Because until you flush this out, let me tell y'all something, baby, some awful mess is fixing to happen. That's what the Pope was over here trying to talk about. Any of y'all hip to Notre Dame, the book? You, have you read it lately? You better go back and read it. The boy wrote that book in 1540. And he said in that book what will happen. Denver wasn't even Denver, but if you look at that book, he was talking about Denver and talk about when the Pope comes. Got four years left. All the animals is getting rabies. Y'all got them pets in y'all. You better watch them. Because one of them scratch your child and you know, scratch you and you don't know it. Once rabies sit in, you can't trigger it back. In 14 days, you have a mad person on your hand. This thing is moving fast. All the most hard movies you think you see. Oh, oh no, no. They're going to be in the street now, baby. 
And if there is a God at all that say what go around, come around, y'all knew it's coming back. And we said, well, why do we black folks have so many problems? Because we violated. it. So I want to have some fun. Go into the library and get a book on mercenaries. Okay. Now, watch this now. Because when you go in your back, don't, don't make noise going in, please, because you move, I'll lose my train. Let's get it as fast as easy as you can. Now, listen to this now. A soldier is someone who fights for what? Their country. All right? Y'all got that? Anybody have a problem with that? All right? A mercenary is somebody that fights for somebody else's country. Right? We didn't get, don't take it to that. A mercenary is somebody who fights for somebody else's country. You don't have to be for money. Could be just to make you like me. Could be to get my civil rights. All right? Y'all got that now? A soldier is what? A mercenary is what? In the eyes of God, a soldier and a mercenary is looked down on. At no circumstances did you kill. I mean, think about some white folks sitting somewhere today, and we walk out of here today, they can declare war, and we stupid enough to send our children somewhere to fight just because some white folks got mad. So war ain't good at all. War? So, if you was God and mercenaries and soldiers are bad, a soldier, someone fights for his country, and a mercenary, somebody fights for another, which one of those two would be the worst in your eyesight? Mercenary. Because even when I can't justify killing, at least you was, you know what I'm saying, fighting for your country, right? Now, as a mercenary, I'm fighting for what? All right. So if this white dude here gets drafted in the army, he's going to war to fight for what? His country. World War II, right? Now, I had no rights in World War II, right? So if I got drafted in the army, I was going to fight for what? So that makes me a what? Okay, now that's very important. Now, let me cheat for y'all for a minute. When you talk about mercenaries, go look up the French Foreign Legion. You know they mercenaries? French Foreign Legion is mercenaries. Well, Foreign Legion, right? <laughs> and you know what? Do you know in the history of the French Foreign Legion, they've never been able to come to France in between wars? <laughs> because there's something so sick about a mercenary that in between wars, they rape their children, they rape their mother, they kill their mother, their grandmother, they sell dope to everybody in the neighborhood. If you look at the mercenaries, the French Foreign Legion, you'll see the same thing that's happening in the black community today. This is what happened to my thing. I'm your daddy. I went to World War II. Think about this, okay? I got killed in World War II. You don't have a daddy, right? The same German that killed me during World War II can come to your daddy's country today and come to New Orleans and live and work where you can't work. What kind of fool am I? Did you just hear what I just said? Huh? The same German! Okay? This sister's a brilliant mind. World War II, they brought Walter von Braun, they brought all them German scientists over here, and there's no way she could have got one of them jobs because she's black. They killed us. Mercenary? Now, I'm your daddy. I didn't get killed. I come back home. And after the first time black folk would go to school because they had something called G.I. what? G.I. Bill. So I go to college, right? Get me a doctor's degree, right? Send my children to college, right? Because I was able to get through college on what? And now I got me a good job, right? I became a doctor, right? And I made enough money to take care of my children, right? Do you know in the eyes of God what I had to do in order to get G.I. Bill? I had to be willing to do what? And God is trying to tell us, all oh, y'all that went to war just so you could get you a degree and kill, I will rain blood down on your degree. Four generations of your kin. Now y'all go back and count World War II and see what generation this is. And then wonder why that violence is sweeping the black man. Wonder why this little child here, as, as nice as he is, can't walk down any black community. We ain't even worried about the Klan. The Klan hurting him is point zero, right? 
You never thought you would see the day no. that a mother couldn't send a child out. You remember how mad y'all used to get these black parents just wore y'all out going to the store. Go get this, go get that, go get this, go get that, right? You ever think you'd see the day that a parent would be scared to know school had started because school ain't safe? It's the power of God. Y'all call it what you want. Why? Get with some of these black men. You know how you can fuck old brother and make him talk? Just get to talking and, and don't be, you know. Ask some of them what they did in Vietnam. How many old women they raped over here with this trifling white boy? Because, see, they're away from home, and that's the enemy. So here's an 85-year-old woman, so I just rape her and kill her. Ask them trifling niggas what they did over there with them trifling white boys and find out why it's backing back up on us. Okay? Why it's backing back on us. You sisters got some of the damnedest whoopings from veterans who back in the old days, they were shell-shocked they could go to VA hospital. You know, 42% of the homeless people, I ain't talking about black now, 42% of the homeless people been dumped out of mental hospitals because they don't care. You got soldiers that need help, that, that when you sit and kill people, that stuff come back on you. You be laying up there holding one of them damn brothers, and he, you hear you five o'clock ago, he kill everybody in the house. Mm -hmm. But I went to war so I could go to school. Your degree ain't safe. And it comes back. What do we say? Y'all know it. What go around? All right, now, you think that just means, or do it mean everything? So how many bums did I drop as a black brother with this trifling white boy on villages that kill little babies? All right? So if all of us doing the Vietnam War, if all of us were scared, right, during the Vietnam War, we're Vietnamese, right? And we scared by what? Children, because they just drop bums, right? They didn't drop bums just on the, the enemy line, right? They dropped bums in the villages, right? So if all of us was Vietnamese families, we ain't that much worried for ourselves. We worried for who? Did you ever think you'd see today that God would put it right back on you right home? Now you worried for your children. You don't even feel safe when they go to school. Did you ever think you would see today that you wouldn't feel safe in your shop? Did you ever think you would see today that your business would get bad because people are scared to come to your shop if you're in a certain neighborhood? See how it works? And it affects the economy. Anything it do, sex economy. Do you know what happened to America last Friday, the 13th? Any y'all know the stats? $700 billion America lost because folks are so scared of Friday the 13th, millions of Americans don't go to work, they don't come out the house, they don't shop, they don't pay no bills. You see what I'm saying? What fear do? One day, one day, one little ripple, Friday the 13th, that scared people so bad that there's millions of people that will not come out, will not go. So if I'm scared and I don't come to work, you lose money, right? I lose money, right? If, I don't, if, if, if 10 million people didn't come out the house that normally would be using their car to burn gas, I mean, you got to burn up gas, you got to burn up rubber, right? And I tell them, I'm going to stop and buy something, see what, see what fear would do? Okay? And if black folks right now is more afraid than white folks, then how have it affected the economy? Then what's this game about? Then me and her get scared because these old types of niggas are going to come in here and we buy us a gun. Right? But when we bought the gun, I forgot that me and this old sister see one another every now and then. And I forgot that, that this sister here might come and tell her and that she's going to start whooping with an argument and I'll knock her down and her 18-year-old boy that normally wouldn't mess with me run and get that gun blow me away. Y'all better be careful about those guns y'all got in your house for the burglar because white folks put them nigger guns in the house after the riots in the 60s to kill me with and the white homicide rate have increased 18,000% because that same gun they bought for me they will use on each other. Remember, when I bought the gun, me and her were friends. When the white folk bought them guns, they were scared of me. Okay? And so when they bought the gun, that little white boy was five years old. Now, 15 years later, he's 20. I come home, white boy, drunk with my briefcase, lipstick all over my car. She asked me, where it been? Wow. And he said, don't hit mom. And you know, white boy, just like me, get them in. You can't talk to me like that, boy. I'll kill you. And that's what you think. Boom, 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 boom. The gun was in the house for niggas. But it didn't say niggas only. That's the same guns y'all putting in the house now for the burglar. For the burglar. 
the whole game. We can drug people out all over the world with our army. Any of y'all aware that in Vietnam, they shipped heroin back to America, sold up where? Anybody know, sir? Inside the bodies of dead American servicemen in their bellies. It's drug shipping. They don't care. And so, and so when we start understanding who we are and, and what we can do about it, because thank God there is a God. Give me, uh, sit here for me, will you? Sit here. Here. Come up, brother, will you? Sit him over there next to you. I want y'all to play with me for a minute. These are not people, these are horses, okay? Y'all follow that? Who would be the father horse? Who would be the mother horse? Who would be the baby horse? Now, these horses are what we call wild horses, right? That means they just buck around, they're just controlled by God and nature. Y'all follow that? Now. We want to get us some milk horses, right? And some race horses, right? And some show horses, right? Can we use any of them right now as the condition they is? Why? They wild. Got to train them, right? Now watch me very close because I'm going to show you how we, you know we can do this, right? And what we're fixing to do now is call you break a nigger like you break a horse. All right? Now watch it now because that's what happened to us. When we came over here from Africa, we weren't slave mentalities. We were kings and queens. That's right. We walked like it. If you don't believe it, go to Africa now and look how they walk. Go to Africa now, you see dirt, poor, poverty, but nobody sells dope because they're poor. Children aren't getting raped. Women aren't getting raped. You hear what I'm saying? And there ain't an African I can bring over here now and put a suit on that you can tell was locked in poverty. Hear me good now. But yet we can go to the ghetto and I'm, we put on them, we know where they're from. Okay? Hear me good now. Okay, what I put on you, I know where you're from. I know if you're educated, I know if you're not educated, I know if you're from Mississippi, I know if you, you understand what I'm saying? I know if you share sharecropper, I know the whole game. I can look at your behavior patterns. Why is it those Africans today come over here and go to colleges? And get all their degrees. Kings and queens. Royalty. Queen Elizabeth is the queen, but all of her people are royalty, right? That's the same thing we are. So I did not have slave mentality. So I got to break a nigger like I broke a horse. So let's watch and see how we do this now. Who is this? Who is this? And who is this? If she have a choice to pull and save one of these, who would she go to? The baby, right? That's natural instinct, right? So now we so dirty, we are gonna take advantage of her natural instinct and mess up the whole tribe, right? Because we want these horses to do what? Huh? Okay, tamed so we can be race horses because we can't make no money this way, right? Can we ride on any of them's back? All right, now, if I've got me some stable and I'm telling you, we're going horseback riding, y'all ain't going to ride on no horse that ain't going to let you on, right? Plus, i got to put something over their back, call the what? And you know they'll fight till death, right? So I've got to break them. You follow that? So how do we break it? Now, we're going to take advantage of her. What did we say about mama? She's going to save the child, right? So what we're going to do is come out every morning with a big old stick and hit him. If I hit you with a stick, what are you going to do? What you going to do? Come on now. Come on. you going to holler. All right? Now, you might do all the other stuff, but you're going to holler. Right? Now, that's what I've got to depend on. So let's go again. I'm going to hit him with a big old stick. What are you going to do? 
right? When she hears that, what's she going to do? Huh? She's going to get closer to what? Now, dig what I did. I'm the enemy. I just created something to separate them. See that? See that work? These are horses. I'm a human, right? Okay? I ain't got nothing in common with them, right? But I know that if I go because I know motherhood, if I hit him, right? Remember what we just said earlier? How mothers will teach their children to behave around white cops, but won't teach them how to behave around black cops? Teach them to be respectful for a filthy white dude that'll blow you away? Something's wrong with that. All right? Now, watch what mothers will do now. Now, so now we know when we hit him, he'll holler, right? And she'll, right? Now, after we whoop him for about a week, right? Every time she see me coming, right? Who does she start thinking about? Not the, okay? So every time, so now, when she see me coming, he becomes a threat to her what? Ain't that funny? Ain't that funny how I'm not the threat, right? Because she knows he wasn't here, right? Okay? Because I ain't never hit them too, right? Okay? So now we're going to do it again. We're going to whoop him, and he's going to holler, make all kind of noise. Oh. Uh, all right, right? And she hears that, right? And so she reach over, hug him. Hug him. She reach over, hug that child, right? Okay? Now watch this. Now one day, remember now, I ain't doing this, but we all working together. Don't put this on me now. God's going to get us all. Okay, I'm working for y'all, right? So now we're going to go out, and in front of them, we're going to do what to him? Kill him. Right? Who said that? Okay. Kill him. Y'all got that? He dead. Right? He'll never holler again. Now, she take that baby and move on in the barn, right? She's scared of me, right? All right? Now, she's in the barn. I locked the fence. I want y'all to follow this real close. Who's in the barn now? Mama and who? Where they gonna eat? Well, ain't no hay in the barn, baby. Who, who, who's supposed to put the hay in the barn? Me. <laughs> See, that's why you put a horse in the barn, because ain't no grass in the barn. I put a horse in the barn so they can't eat till like they're ready to feed them. See? See, when they was running around wild, wasn't no barns, right? So they ate what God meant for me, right? right? So now the most I can do before I break them, I put a lasso around, noose around, and pull them over to a certain area, and put them in the barn, right? right. Now, he's dead, right? Mm -hmm. They watched it, right? And they know I killed him, right? Mm -hmm. So now, three days in the barn, ain't no food, right? Mm -hmm. So I come to her with an apple. What do you think she's going to do? No, 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 no. Come on. Come on, mothers now. Come on. Get the mother instinct. No, no, no. Come on now. Come on, mother. Mother, 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 mother. I'm the murderer. Okay, but she's afraid of it. Afraid of it. But she's so hungry and weak. She's going to eat it because she got to take that chance. But she's not going to give it. Listen, let me break it down. Y'all just watched the mafia kill your husband. The mafia brought a cake. Y'all are hungry. You might eat the cake, but you're not going to share it with the baby because you know who I am, right? But now after she eats 12 apples and nothing happened to her, right? Then she knows the apples are safe, right? Then what's she going to do? But worse than that, I just killed the daddy, right? And she just delivered her baby to me. See how it works? <laughs> you break a nigga like you break a heart. Did y'all see that? Just dealing with natural instincts. You hear me? I killed have to hate them, okay? Did a calculated plan to beat him, to scare her, to separate them, then kill him, all right? Then, the one who destroyed this, she got to come through for dinner because God didn't put integrity in animals. That she, that's what they call about animal instinct. But there's an integrity in you that you were supposed to die first, and when you don't, you violate. Before I eat your filth. Now let's switch it around for a minute. Because we think mothers will do anything for their children, right? Mm -hmm. This is a Muslim sister. She and her children starving. I bring her some pork. She gonna eat it or starve? 
Ain't it funny what we do for religion? What we won't do for God? Ain't it funny what we'll do for religion? <laughs> we can have an integrity for religion, but when it comes to integrity for God, so now, y'all heard the story of the horse, right? All right, I'm the white monster. Black man, black woman, black child. We beat him, human now, no horse, in front of them, right? Plus all the other slaves, right? All right? And we instill that fear. Now, every time y'all see me coming, y'all know I'm going to do what? Beat him, right? And that's a threat to all of you all, right? And then one day we have to do what to him? So what they did is they took one horse and faced east and another horse and faced west and tied one leg to this horse and tied the other leg to this horse and set this nigga on fire and hit them two horses and split him right in two. You break a nigga like you break a horse. And then I came back out to the slave tent and faded her. <laughs> and she wouldn't take it. And she got hungry and hungry. And some of them died. But the one that took it, okay, is the one I know will share with his children. And from that point on, you deliver them to me. That's how it started. That's what we the offsprings are. That's the game system. Thank you. Stand up for a minute. You the slave master. Y'all follow this? He's a slave man. So every time I see him, I go up and make him laugh. Hey man, let me tell you something, boy. Let me tell you something. Because as long as he laughing, I know what? I'm safe. Thank you. Y'all hear that? Thank you. Did you hear that? As long as the slave master is laughing, what? Y'all ever been on one of them jobs? Them white jobs at the Christmas party? And you hear them white folks laughing? When you look over there, who is that making them laugh? The brother. See what those jeans would do? The black man is still, now I ain't talking about you brothers walk around in more evil looks on your face. That y'all don't even count. Y'all ain't doing nothing. I'm talking about them brothers that's on them jobs that can't wait. Never say nothing at home to their wife or their children. Can't wait to get to work. They the life of the party. Because in my subconscious mind, that's my protection. As long as Miss Crackers laughs, and I know he's not going to hurt me. See how it works? That's the game. White folk come over here and took the Indians and ran them away. He did the same thing to the Mississippi River, but he's messing with God. See, the river backed up on him two months ago. Okay? And he mad. She mad. No, 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 no. That's the, river. That, that's the river always. The river ain't going out of its banks. They say the river rose up out of... No, 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 no. Y'all was off y'all's area. <laughs> y'all was off y'all's area. Manhattan is a what? An island, right? Did y'all know that? The hippest number one city in the world is New York. And when they talk about New York, they talk about Manhattan, right? It's an island. Did you know that? Huh? And one day that water's going to come back. And they're going to be complaining. Well, I can't believe. I can't believe. This is my land. See how it works? See how it works? What's your name? You don't want to take it off. Leave it. What's your, what's your name? What's your name? Alfred. Alfred. Uh, how old are you? He's now, let's say he's five years old. He just spit on her and called her MF. Hmm? Now, if he's five years old, he had to hear somebody say that, right? Where's your answer? You over here? Son walking around. Listen, my son came home, he's like six years old, he's sitting at the table. He said, the cocksucker. So I looked at my wife and hear me good now. So we kept our conversation going. 
So I said, hey, camp, let's go outside and play some basketball. So we go outside. I said, the cocksucker, the Tommy, yeah, the cocksucker, the cocksucker. I said, well, you hear that? I said, the bus driver called me that every morning. See what happens if y'all keep your mouth shut and stop attacking them? Boom. Because you got some kind of old religious hang up and you can't even use your God and church. You know a five-year-old child didn't create that word and you ain't even clever enough because of your hang up to find out where to relax him enough to tell the real story. And if y'all got enough sense to relax some of y'all's daughters enough, y'all might find out they've been tampered with at school. And like some of y'all boys enough, you might find out they've been tampered with at school too. A lot of times they come to try to tell y'all something. Y'all get y'all jaw tight and y'all make them think that when that priest or that just touched them in their butt, they did something wrong because of y'all's ignorance. So we out there and I said, bus driver call you a counselor? Yes. Yeah. Who else you call a counselor? The rest of the black? <laughs> Game over now. That's all I need to know. Come on, son, let's go on back in the house. Ain't it funny, man? I ain't never played basketball with y'all. You didn't see nothing strange about that? Nah, the new long story's now, baby. Busy shooting along. He just spit on you and called you an MF, right? I'm so busy getting mad at him, I don't even have the integrity of a parent to find out where he found it out unless you know. Did he hear you call your old man one? Your old man called you one? Huh? Did he see you spit on your sister? Because if he is, he's just emulating you. So why does that make you mad? But let's go back now. He's five years old, right? He just called her MF. No son of mine going to do that. Come here, boy. Get across my lap. Boom. 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 Now, watch this here. Come here, hold your mic for me there, will you? Let me show you something very important. When a mother puts a baby that's sick over her lap, she puts one foot up here and the other one and go like that because you get action in the spine. And she might hum a little song, right? And this will break a fever, you know that? Oh, no, serious, you all know that? This will break a fever, all right? And watch my foot now. Y'all got to stand, okay? See the foot, see the action? If now, up here, the spine opens up and pulls all this sickness into the brain where it can handle it, okay? Y'all follow that? All right, now watch this. When I spank him, shock waves, thank you, son, goes up his spine and create brain damage. And they know now your most violent sex maniac got whoopings from their parents. You see?